Hello everyone and welcome to the High Roller Super Millions Week 5 Season 2, the weekly 10k that explodes over at GG Poker. I'm Kevin McCoy, also known as Rotterdam. And with me as always is my friend who still doesn't know what the European Championships of Football are, but that's so good because we're just gonna talk about poker tonight. It's Nana Noko. What's up, Nana? Uh what's up, man? Uh you told me you didn't do your final table betting yet. But we still have 10 minutes. Does that mean maybe you're going to throw out some bets today? Absolutely, mate. We are going to make some bets. And yeah, I, I actually had a super busy last 48 hours. I did take a look at it and I saw a lot of bullets were fired by a couple of individuals that didn't even necessarily make the final table. But let's just take a look at it together. We're doing it live today, guys. This is our pre pre show. That means we have nine minutes left to place a couple bets at the final table of today. I don't want to get too out of line nano because I actually haven't been uh, playing that well, but we'll throw a couple dollars around as this is our lineup for tonight. And I have to admit, I think it's A, a good lineup, but B, also a very tricky one to predict today. Yeah, um, there's a lot of good players here and there, there are some new faces. Um, I'm happy to see this lineup uh, from a viewing point of view. Like there's some of my favorite players in there, right? We got Mr. Gamble. In second, Jay Anderson. We got Bruno Volkman. And, you know, Fiesta Pagana, Simon Matson. He's real ID now. He won won this series already, or this uh, season two. And he's an amazing player. So, you know, it, it's a tough one to bet on for you, Roddy. I'm curious to see what you're thinking. I'm looking at Yuri, mate. I see Yuri at 48 to 46 to 1. He's telling me that I can put 100 bucks in Yuri, and if he wins it tonight, I'm gonna get $4,600 back. Then Anoko convinced me 188,000 chips. That sounds like a lot of chips. I mean, uh, 188,000 is actually six big blinds, okay, or 6.3. But 6 we're rolling 5. it back. We're rolling it back, man. They've already rolled it back. Oh. They've already rolled it back, Rowdy. Look Good at him. Okay. It, let's just imagine this guy had 10 big blinds worth, right? Like how much does uh, Segra back their chip leader have? He's, he's got like 2 million big blinds, you know? Gotta look. He's just so, so short. It is, uh, what, plus 4,500? It's a big gamble for you, Roddy. I don't know. Are you going to put some money on him? If you do, I wouldn't put 100 bucks. That's a little no, too gambling for me. I know, I know, mate. I was, I was just joking. That actually means that the page I have open is wrong because there I see that he had 13.1 big blinds, but it also says he had 327,000 chips. So that is indeed a bit inaccurate. No, I am a believer, but I'm not a believer in Yuri today. Uh, I think a relatively safe bet is obviously Mr. Gamble, literally the best performing player of the entire first year of the High Roller Super Millions. I don't think you can go wrong with putting some money on Mr. Gamble. And we also know that he likes to show and he likes to meme about Pocket Force, so he has a special place in our heart. But I also do have the little voice in the back of my head. How many times can one man win it? You know, like I have a, <laughs> I, I don't, I, I'm superstitious in that regard. I mean, he did win it. How many times did he win it? Was it two or three, Roddy? I know one of them was like one of the big million dollar ones. Um, exactly. But uh, I think it's I think it's two times. Yeah, I don't think anyone won it three times besides Michael Adamo, right? No, no. one else joined him. But uh, something that's interesting now that I'm looking at these uh, final table betting odds is, you know, we got some great players, Mr. Gamble. Well, you know, Meow, 41. We don't know who he is, but he's got... Just a tiny bit more chips than Mr. Gamble. But you look at the odds to win, you can see you get like a whole one point above. So you get more value bet on Meow 41. The only problem is you don't know who he is. A very similar story. So if you look at Simon Matson, we know who he is. We know he's an amazing crusher. He's got 1.2 million. Romero Patroni, he's 1.5. He's got 300,000 more chips. Yet the odds are pretty much exactly the same. <coughs> So the favorite players out there, you know, even look, Bruno Volkman, 883,000. Chris Burtz, he's got more chips, but the odds are, are better for Chris Burtz. So, like, it's, it's tricky. Your favorite players, while they're maybe a little bit more likely to win, you don't got the odds to win so much. So I don't know what you're thinking there. Oh, you're not helping because you're basically just telling me that everyone can win it tonight. <laughs> I'm definitely like I think a little bet on Mr. Gamble is mandatory, right? I think like it would be mate. criminal if you don't do that. 
I don't think that Simon Massin is a bad bet, of course, because he looked really good the week he won it, where he went heads up against Ben CB, even lost the lead for a split second, and then just got it back. Not off the back of like some crazy coolers or getting lucky. Like, no, he played just really, really well and showed a lot of heart. Even got Ben to fold aces when he shouldn't have folded mm -hmm. aces. So, and then Bruno Volkman is obviously always playing to win it. All right. What about we'll go for the traditional 100 bucks. What if I just put 60 on Mr. Gamble, 20 on Volkman, and 20 on Chris uh, Puts? That's $100. Why are you putting that? 20 on Chris? What if, I thought you were going to put the 20 on the other guy you just spoke about, Simon Matson. No, that's not No, happening. he's not going to win it again. He played well, but he's not going to win it again. Adamo did win three of the first 10 episodes of season one. Why can't Simon Matson win three of the first episodes of season two? That was a mother and day miracle. You know what? 75 bucks on Mr. Gamble. I'm going to send it. I have upped my bet. <laughs> <laughs> the more you look at it, you're like, the more confident you, you feel in that bet. All right. Yeah. So you put $75 down on Jay Anderson, Mr. Gamble. And what's, what about the other guys? You, you decided? Yeah. 25 on each. So 125 total today. All right. One of, one of the three wins it. You always get over 300. It's pretty reasonable. It's the way you bet, Roddy. You know, I, ho I hope it works for you. It seems this season you have not picked a winner yet. No, but I have picked the runner-up each and every single week, Nananoko. You may want to add that before you start burning me again on camera. I've picked like four guys to be the runner-up, okay? I should get an award for that, mate. Well, I mean, you don't get a trophy. You just get a participation letter or congratulations. No. Well done, Roddy. You picked people who didn't win it. As usual. I picked people but, who were very, very close to winning it and all pretty much each and every single week at least once had the chip lead in the heads up. It's more of a how bad can I run kind of thing, okay, Nananoko? This is not me failing. This is me doing really well but getting unlucky. It's also they're like very also very deep in the heads up, right? And you got your guy has a chip lead and all of a sudden they just go crashing down the first five minutes, just doing insane yeah. plays. All of a sudden, right after, it's like, wow, I'm starting to feel really good about your bet today, Rotterdam. It's always right after those famous words that everything goes well. Don't put this on me, mate. You're the one who's making life hell for me. <laughs> no, I think uh, it's okay like this, right? Like 75 bucks on Mr. Gamble, 25 on Bruno, 25 on Chris. I think it's reasonable. Definitely reasonable. Um, I do think you can't go too wrong with a lot of the guys here. There are big crushers. There are some new names here. I think names that you probably aren't familiar with. Um, they're great players. Um, Sergio Ido at the very bottom. He's got he doesn't have many chips, but um, he, he's been he's been playing a lot of events just in general. Uh, I just haven't maybe he hasn't been playing all the super millions, but he he's a big crusher out there, and you know he plays like even 100k's and 50k's and 25k's. So I'm curious to see how he does here today. Um, no, he's not from Macau, but uh, he is a Spanish player that is a uh, location based in Macau right now. But uh, our chip leader is actually a very strong player too, Roddy. Uh, I think he's known as like one sick one or something. I don't think he plays all the 10Ks out there, or at least not on GG. But uh, he's a very, very strong player. I, I believe Ben CB regards him as a very good player too, and he, he's quite crazy. So as a chip leader, he might just throw the ropes on the other guys out there. So I think it's going to be a lot of fun. A lot of people have been betting today. It's like uh, over a hundred bets have been placed on Mr. Gamble, 130 bets on Bruno Volkman. This man's got a passionate following. The Brazilian community is just full of passionate degenerates because there are even 112 people who have bet on Yuri so far. <laughs> I, I think I want to do it too. Fuck. I, I, I sorry. I'm actually, you gotta hurry up. You've got yeah, like yeah. one minute left, Roddy. Yep. 15 bucks on Yuri, baby. Send it. <laughs> 15 bucks to get 700 in return if he wins it tonight. Go, Yuri. Yuri is capable of winning it. He's done it before. He's done it before. He's gotten, uh, he's gotten second place. He's gotten third, fourth, fifth. He's gotten every single place. One of our uh, big performers from season one. So, yeah, all right. It just seems like if other people are jumping off the bridge, well, Roddy's going to jump off with them. Good luck, uh, Yuri fans. You sound like my mom right now. That's what my mom always used to tell me. When I was like, why did you do that, son? I'm like, well, mom, the other guys did it. I'm like, well, if they all jump off the bridge, because we live near a pretty big bridge. Are you going to do it too? I'm like, well, yeah, if it's cool. And then my mom would be like, it's 
stop being stupid. And I was like, okay, I'm sorry, mom. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, uh, I think it's going to be another good episode, Roddy, because like well, we've done four so far. This is episode five. Every single one is delivered. Um, yes, we've got a lot of new names, but it's been pretty fun every single time. I think you agree. And today, I'm almost certain this is going to deliver for sure. No, I really agree. I uh, keep saying this during my stock of two streams as well. Whenever people ask me, it's like, hey, Roddy, how's the poker commentary going? I'm like, man... I'm not saying this because I'm commentating, but the first four weeks of season two, I really feel each and every single week, we've been losing our minds. We've seen a lot of crazy hands. We've seen phenomenal plays. And I feel like the guys that have been winning it so far, just the only thing we can really do is tip our fedoras to them and they deserved it. Last week, obviously our winner was one card away from being eliminated when he needed a king or 10 on the river and he did get it against Anatoly actually, who was our bubble boy, I believe. Final table bubble boy this week. So Anatoly almost with another final table, but it's been it's been sick. They have played so well. I'm just sitting here each and every single week. I'm ready for live poker. This pre-show, this chat with you, you know, they can take it from me. But the actual poker, it's been so fun to watch. And this actually, like, take a look at the lobby. This Sunday has been crazy, you know. Like, a lot, obviously Isaac Hexton was a runner-up last week. I saw that uh, Mr. Hexton did have another good run. They also fired five bullets uh, to get there. I saw Bert Stevens had a big uh, run. Ottomar Latva, our week one season two champ. He got very deep into our tournament. Arthur was feeling it. He fully sent it. Limitless had a pretty decent run. Nicholas Ostad did his best. Justin Bonomo did his best. So it really did seem like Sunday was fireworks. Yeah, I mean, people are firing. They just feel like they just, they, their bankroll is obviously huge. Um, Arthur was in for more bullets than five, less than eight. So you can guess between which number <laughs> it was. <laughs> he just kept firing. Did he end up cashing? I didn't check on that. I don't think he did. I just I closed see. it, but I can take one more. Because obviously it's starting soon, and I don't want to spoil it for myself. Because we're obviously always commentating over I mean, delay. I don't really need to know if he, he cashed or not, but we know he did okay. in final table. Uh, but here's my other question. Did yeah. Anatoly visit your stream this week? He did not, actually. He That's why not. he did in final table. Maybe, yeah. I don't know you think of it now that you put it like that. He did not. But to be fair, I've been streaming at weird times and I've been doing a lot of commentary. But no, no, no visit this week of Anatoly. But it's okay. He showed StarCraft 2 love while he was on the final table. And that's the first in over a year. So that man can do no wrong in my book, Nanonoka. <laughs> well, I mean, you did him wrong because since you didn't stream at your normal hours, now he didn't even get another pay jump to get the final <laughs> table. But then, you well, know, hopefully he's watching this and realizes, God damn it, I didn't visit Roddy's stream. But I really don't think he is. No, I think actually if I would have properly streamed poker, uh, as obviously guys, final table betting is closed. You guys can no longer place your bets. You only have 10 minutes. Hopefully you guys were able to get a couple of final bets in with the mediocre advice of Nananoko, where he will then make fun of you for picking the runner up again. But obviously good luck to all the betters out there. This is where we normally kind of just talk about this week in poker. And I was, I have a story for you. I played a little bit of uh, like offline poker, as I call it as a gamer. So poker in real life for the first time in forever. Not in a casino, it was more like a company that organized a, a little poker tour and a very small buy-in. But I was like, it's going to be fun. This was on a Saturday and I was like, well, I do want to play the Beat the Pros, of course. The $210, which is now Euro, by the way. I don't know why that happened, but it's a 210 Euro bounty tournament that starts every Saturday, 7 p.m. Central European time over at GG Poker. And if you knock any of the fishies or baboons out like myself, then you actually get entry into a 5k free roll. So it's a really fun event. There are like 100 plus influencers, streamers, casters, whatever, that play in that tournament. It really has good value, because I actually think the level is a bit lower than most of the other 210 euro tournaments or dollar. But anyway, I played my little offline tourney. I finished like 8th place of 32 players, you know, it was whatever. I came home, it was a bit later, but I was like, you know what, the Beat the Pros is still going. And I used, uh, I used my ticket that I got from GG, and I'm like, alright, let's do it, Beat the Pros, baby. So sign in, sit down, fold the first hand. Second hand, and this is not going to be a traditional bad beat story, so don't worry. Second hand, I, I get aces. I'm like, oh, guy on my right, 10.9 big blinds. I still have like 38. He jams. I'm like, nice, bounty, baby. So I just call with my aces, hoping that someone else comes over the top, but nobody comes. Aces against kings. The guy flops quads. I'm like, <laughs> okay, well, lost 25% of my stack or 30%. It's all good. Two garbage hands, I fold. 
Next hand, I get kings. I'm like, cool. Five hands into the tournament. I've got like 27 bigs since the blinds went up. I raise to two. Everyone falls besides the big blind. He's got 35. Just snaps it. Open ribs. 35 big blinds. Slightly covers me. I call off with kings. He's got sevens. I was like, don't you dare, Kevin Martin. Sevens don't always make a set. He made a set. And I was out. So I was like, I was playing six hours of poker in this tournament. That was like for, you know, just a couple hundred euros. I'm like, whatever, that didn't work out. But the beat the pros, baby, that's my tourney. Aces, get wrecked by quads. Kings, four hands later. I'm like, well, the rebuy it is. And the second run went a bit better. But I was like, wow, what, what an entry. What, what a tourney. <laughs> Well done, well done. Um, but how did you place in your company event that you played for, with in you know, whatever? Yeah, eight. I, I finished eight place oh. out of 32. It's I was going to say like eight a... out of nine is pretty good, but you know, eight out of 32 is even better. <laughs> Not eight out of nine, I don't know. No, it was like 32 players with rebuys, and I never rebuilt, by the way, so all of my uh, first bullet. A little run, but the blinds suddenly went up super quick. It was just fun. Like, I mostly went because my dad went and my brother went. So this wasn't poker. Like, all right, hoodie, earbuds, let's grind. This was old school, drink a beer, have some fun, chat along kind of poker. It was a good time. That's good, you know? Like, I, I missed that. And um, we do have World Series live poker coming back. That's cool. And there's another World, World Series online bracelets over at GG. Is that starting mm -hmm. real soon? That is starting real soon, but you're putting me in this spot now, but I can actually take a look. If Are you going to play any of them, Roddy? That's the real of question. Of course I'm going to play it, mate. I'm not just going to play. I'm going to win it. And then every single week that you have to cast with me, I'm going to show off my ring or bracelet, whatever I may be getting for this one. I'll be like, hello, Nanonoko. How are you doing today? Huh? You can pick a winner. Five scan flop set. Look at me. That's my dream. If I can have one wish, I don't. They can keep the money. Just give me the honors and give me, give me the ring or the bracelet. That's all. So I can rub it in your face each and every single week. That's all I want. Oh uh, yeah. So, um, but <laughs> that'll be fun. Of course. Uh, the the nice thing about the GG ones is that that main event pays so so much money, uh, and uh, obviously a huge guarantee. So that'd be cool to see. I I've believe... got the dates, by the way, mate. Sorry, what is but it? it's. Uh... August 1st, so it's indeed starting real soon. It's within five days. Uh, and it runs till September the 12th. Jeez Louise, so that's uh, 41 days of a lot of online poker to talk about, mate. Definitely a lot. That means we're going to get special editions, though, where the prizes are even bigger and more entries, new faces. But uh, that's always nice, right? Like first place, about a million bucks. I'll take it. Yep. Well, let's go ahead and actually start our pre-show because the cards go up in the virtual air 23 minutes from now. Unless there is something else that's really important, nah. Nano. What have you been watching? Anything? A tweet? A video? God, I, I, I thought about this question sometime before just, I, I got on the call. Now I can't remember the answer. If it comes to mind, I'll let you know. But let's just go ahead and move on. Yep. Well, let's go ahead and actually start our pre-show of the High Roller Super Millions. Week 5, Season 2. There's one hand that I am actually really excited to hear your thoughts over because I get it, but I still think it's awesome. And that's the hand of Meow. But let's start things off with our chip leader the way that we always do it. You already gave us a little sneak peek, Nanonoko. You said you think this dude is incredibly good and he gets praise from Ben CB. Well, that's hard praise to get, I imagine. Has not been super active in uh, the High Roller Super Mario in Season 1. Only cash for 70k. I think he can do better than today than he did in the entirety of season one. Well, that's that's just a given, right? This guy's got 85 big blinds, a uh, very strong player. Doesn't play all the super millions, so he's not posting up the results in our super millions. But season two is a new season. People, and if he gets a good run here, what, why is he got the microphone? Oh, okay, he's in an interview. I thought he was like doing the card, calling the cards, the action on that final table. He's, <laughs> I was like, what is going on? But uh, apparently. WSOP E main event, main event runner up for 780,000. That's a lot of money. Today he can just win, I don't know, three or 400,000. That'll be cool. That's very solid. I actually believe there is more WSOP stuff coming up in King's Casino and Rosvadov as well. Uh, I saw that uh, Poker Sasha, actually, our Omaha ambassador of GG, went over to the Czech Republic just the other week. Hanging out with LK, I was super jealous. He's like, where are you, fish? Give me your money. I was like, can't make it this time, Sasha, but I'll make my way over to the Czech Republic real soon. 
Uh, I know that they've done a lot of renovations and they actually build a hotel and stuff. I'm really excited to see it. I miss offline poker, man. I miss it so much. Let's go ahead and take a look at one of the hands that Chris Sagabrak had uh, on his journey to this final table where, well, Nananoko? Judd Trump raced. He called. Someone else jammed. Judd Trump called. Then he jammed the Kings and Judd Trump called with Ace, Queen, Offsuit and Kings held. Amazing. I mean, but it's pretty... Pretty tricky because he just flat calls, smooth calls the pocket kings here against the early position race, seven handed. Um, and I guess they're very deep uh, in, in chips. So Judd Trump and Klaus here. Um, I guess he thought, well, I'm more likely to get like our short stack wage out here to, to jam or Romashka as he just punted or something like that. So that's why he smooth calls the two kings. And then he gets, you know. Judd Trump, he calls, and then Klaus, he actually back raises really small. Well, not really small, because he makes it like 300k, and Judd Trump was like, man, did you really just slow play kings, aces? He didn't think so. He So he jammed all in, and there's a call, because that's a huge pot, right? Because the big blind's only 14,000. Judd Trump lost 1.1 million chips. Uh, is that like 75 big blinds all gone? Yeah, it's a lot. It is a lot, especially for a screen offsuit. Maybe not quite the hand that uh, you want to get it all in with, but it happened. I'm taking a look at the winner, because I see Zagros there, but Zagros is not the one who won last week, right? Or was it actually? It was. It, it was. He oh, was yeah. at our final table last week, yeah. and um, yeah. unknown username won it. And he's yep, a and a Hungarian. Yeah, it's him now. The other Hungarian was David Znap, apparently, who's also won it already this season. Gonna keep it. Gotta remember the champs. Good to see that he apparently had a pretty deep run as well, because this is, uh, I think, somewhat deep into the tournament when we're already getting close to a million chips for a couple of these dudes. So well done. Yeah, sure. He called with the Kings, but I don't find this the most exciting hand of all time. In the Kings got it in pre-flop and they won. Sure, he flat called, but well done. Definitely got max value out of them. If this would have, uh, I mean, Weiz out definitely helped him. Imagine a world where Weiz out just calls, then his hand obviously plays out in a very different manner. Well done. Let's go ahead and move on and take a look at the man who's chasing him. The man who comes in second in chips tonight. It is Meow41. Apparently satellited his way into this event. As you guys can see on the right side, normally doesn't play super high buy-ins. A lot of 800, 1K, 250, 1500, etc. Let's go ahead and take a look at his hand, because Nananoko, I am impressed by the way that he played this hand. Or do you think that I'm impressed over nothing and it's very standard? No, I saw this hand too. I was like, wow, that is a thin value bet there on the river card, right? So anyways, we'll walk it through. It's very early in the tournament. Maybe this is early in the tournament, people just splash around a little bit more. Uh, but he does three bet the two jacks, which is standard. That's the flop. This is a very good flop, queen, queen, deuce. That's the turn, 25% when the flush draw comes in. And then the river's a 10 and he jams it for the rest. And you know, like it's a pretty nice value bet. It's usually pretty darn hard to get called by worse here, right? Like pocket 10s, well, they, they beat you now. Like you're hoping pocket nines call you. And like, it's unlikely your opponent has a 10 in general because maybe you don't think they float you on the flop too often, right? But um, his opponent did here. It's just, it's a good read. I guess he knew his opponent pretty well. And uh, usually when, whenever I bet bet jam and three bet this, or any time here, they always show up with ace, queen, king, queen or something, you know? Like, it, it's really hard to get three streets with these hands, but uh, Meow41 has done it. And Altamar, like, from his point of view, I don't fault him too much because he hit pretty much one of the best cards he can hit with his hand, but uh, it's still pretty scary to call down here. Mm -hmm. And Alomar, of course, no slouch. He's the man who won our very first edition of our second season, played incredibly well, and is also a chess grandmaster player, just so you guys know. Well done, by Meow 41. This hand definitely makes me excited to see what he can do tonight. Let's go ahead and take a look at the next player who's made it to our final table, and that is literally the best performing player of the High Roller Super Mario in Season 1. There you guys can see it. Take a good look at it. You can only see that number once. Uh, I feel like he had a different flag in the past, right? Wasn't it like Austria or something? So I guess he moved to Malta, living that island life. But Mr. Gamble, also known as Jay Anderson, he's back. And I feel like we've already said literally everything about Mr. Gamble that we could say. 
This guy crushes. At first, we didn't know what we were dealing with. We're like, okay, Mr. Gamble, ha, huh, so funny. And ah, oh, he plays. Ah, oh, he makes some crazy moves. And Anoka, look at that. Then the next week, we're like, wait a minute. He makes the same crazy moves, but he makes them at the right moment. They keep on working. It's like, no, no, I think this dude is good. And it turned out he wasn't just good. He was very good. And that's why he ended up becoming the best player of season one or MVP. Let's go ahead and take a look at his hand. Because his hand is actually quite interesting too. But I find it mostly interesting what Pot Ripper does on the river. But talk us through Nananoka. Yeah, it looks like so Mr. Gamble, he's flopped King 9. Uh, he flops really well, right, with the Trip King. But he decides to check it back. Gets checked him again. Of course, he's going to start betting. And then the river is where things get interesting because he's got the full house. He's play He's done nothing wrong, Mr. Gamble. He's bet his full house. And he gets check raise. And he jams, but Pot Ripper, um, you know, like he, he check raises the river with the flush, which makes a lot of sense. It's hard for him to be beat, right? Then do you call off? I guess is the question. Uh, man, it's tricky because if you fold this hand, well, then you fold like almost everything, right? Uh, I guess Pot Ripper can show up with better hands. He can show up with pocket fours, he can show up with pocket eights, he can show up with king eight. So. He's actually far from the, the best hands he can show up now that I think about it. He can show up with better flush. Queen high flushes, mm -hmm. ace high flushes here. Uh, it's just tough, man. That's the thing. When you're miss when you got you're playing against someone like Mr. Gamble, you're always thinking this guy's got moves. If I fold this hand, you always think you're getting outplayed. And I think Pot Ripper is like, man, I know he's capable of it. Even though it's probably unlikely he's getting rebluffed here. Sometimes you gotta call to find out. And you're out of the tournament. It costs you $10,000. It almost feels like he really put Mr. Gamble on maybe like an ace king with the ace of diamonds or a king queen with the queen of diamonds. Because otherwise, what else would Mr. Gamble be raising your re-raise with right on the river? It does feel really damn strong at that point. You know, you're dealing with at least a king. Yeah, it, it could have been like, for instance, the way that Mr. Gamble played this hand is also... I want to say it could have been pocket eights, but I know maybe that's a bit unlikely because that's not a bad flop for pocket eights, so maybe he would see about that. Yeah, pocket eights or pocket fours, especially with Mr. Gamble, is a possibility. I don't know if I like the initial raise of Jack-7 on the river, but I definitely, yeah. Uh, it sucks to then fold, obviously, because the pot gets so big, but I do think at that point you're calling and you kind of know you're out, right? <laughs> In live poker, right, this is what you do. You, you hover your cards, you aim them towards the muck, you throw the calling chips in, and then you throw them in. Yeah. You're out. <laughs> Pretty much. Anyway, well done by Mr. Gamble. This absolutely helped him to carry a proper stack into this final table, and we are so happy to have you back. We're obviously very excited to see you play some poker tonight. Moving on, coming in in fourth place tonight is someone from Uruguay. It's Ramiro Patron. He has made it to our final table twice actually taking top three finishes in season one obviously not yet in season two but we're only a couple weeks in sold out and by the way his option sold out 30 percent at 1.05 so they believed in him and they believed in him for all the right reasons yeah he's he's got actually two third places man i don't remember these these third places um but uh He's, he's a good player. I think I looked up his name. I think I saw he was like Rama Star, who's just someone who I've recognized his name. He's quite good internet player. Um, everyone from Uruguay is, a, is an amazing, aggressive player. So it's going to be a nice mix into this lineup. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at his hand, which I actually think is very interesting for many, many, many reasons. Let's start off pre-flop, Nenonoko. It's uh, Zagabrak. I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce his name. His name is Chris as well, you said? Klaus. Klaus. C-L-A-A-S. Yeah, yeah, I know how to spell uh, Klaus. Okay. <laughs> well, we see our chip leader opening up, and he calls with 10-8 in a well, middle position. Actually, what is it? Hijack? <laughs> it's what, uh, what do you make like of the call? Enough. Um, yeah. yeah, it's you, when you're from Uruguay, man, you play more hands, you play more aggressively. I think 10-8 suited, like, it's not a standard call for a lot of guys. A lot of guys like to play the 3-better fold, usually just folding this hand. Because in the hijack, you still got 4 people to act behind you. Um, but I guess not... They aren't that short behind him, so he's more likely to get through with the calls. Whereas, say, like, people behind you have 15 big blinds, they're going to reshove very wide. Or just, they're more desperate. 
so then you can't get away with these calls as much but um i think it's okay it's just more high variance and um you gotta be willing to play for the, the chips post flop well the man flops an open ender he goes check 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 turns the straight not the not straight but obviously a very good straight but there's also a board that i think regardless of what would have happened you want to get a lot of chips in because there is double flush throw on the board and mm -hmm. then obviously a lot of rivers are bad meals like even a, a 10 would be a disaster river card but uh, every spade every heart would be kind of annoying so he's able to get it all in and obviously the 10-8 holds against the king queen pretty interesting hand though seeing ramiro play 10-8 just calling from the hijack i feel like if a lot of amateurs do this like a calling station whatever you know it's just calls you shouldn't call but work out for ramiro in this one yeah um it, that's what i'm saying this final table is going to be a good one because we're not going to have these guys that just wait for pay jumps playing how they should be we got guys that are going to see some flops here try to outplay each other and the good thing here is both of these guys still in at the final table right because Klaus is he's the chip leader and you know people take the right positions we're gonna see some more flat calls some more three betting and uh it's gonna be good we've got five more profiles to cover let's go ahead and take a look at what i can only assume is the beautiful profile of fiesta pagana also known as simon Metzen, also known as c darwin right i don't know about famous tears <laughs> something <laughs> you told me you thought fiesta pagana's real name was charles darwin okay i don't you shouldn't get away with this that's just a crime to you uh, why would you say such a thing then i can't that's believe that you <laughs> that is ridiculous uh, you also think that south korea is participating in the european championships of football so you know better than me okay we'll take a look at the profile of fiesta pagana as you guys can see this man has won a lot has also won the high roller super millions already i believe it was week three an amazing heads up against ben cb uh, especially that hand where he got bent to fold the aces that that was a wild one that was probably one of the crazier hands we've seen this season so far yeah that was a brilliant performance he played perfectly he played really well throughout the final table and i believe he wasn't like getting one of those runs where he was running super hot like oh yeah he's just destined to win he was you know, playing some really tough pots here and there and uh had a great performance he didn't do as well as season one but season two it's all about Fiesta Bagana, Simon Matson, amazing player. I'm happy to see him here. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at one of the many hands that Fiesta Bagana played on his unit to his second final table. This feels like a very serious I want to win this hand syndrome. Now, of course, he's calling off from the small blind, so yeah, maybe he can represent the board a bit better and stuff. But Nananoka, what the hell is happening in this hand? It's a pretty sick hand. He three best the queen jack suited. This is very early in the tournament. Um, that's the flop because you know it's nine three two. What can your opponent have when they call a three bet? Well, they call it crap. Okay, it turns a six. Well, I'm just gonna bet a third of the pot. I'm gonna try to represent those aces, those kings, those queens. Gets called again. Crap. Rivers the king is like, well, I can represent that king queen suited uh, as king, maybe aces queen. I'm just gonna go for it. Truly send it, and his opponent does fold. Um, but uh, this is some power poker here, Roddy. He doesn't have anything. Like, I actually missed the part where he three bet three flops. So yeah, uh, still a tough hand, right? Like, he oh, bet, absolutely, bet jammed. Just yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, it, it feels that Villamarine probably had a pretty decent pair, right? Like maybe uh, tens, jacks, something along those lines. I think tens is very, very into play. I think um, nine eight are into play some ace x spades are in the play uh he definitely folded the best hand there's no questions asked there <laughs> yeah otherwise what the hell is he doing trying to make it to a river but uh yeah, pretty sick hand i'm looking forward to seeing more fiesta began and hopefully we'll see a few more of these kinds of plays because that obviously gets us really going go ahead and moving on this is where we start entering the short stack uh territory of tonight but we still have four players actually to cover all four of these guys not carrying too many chips into our final table. Next up is Chris Kutz. Uh, WSOP bracelet runner-up in 2020. As you guys can see, a couple of decent scores in the first season of the High Roller Super Millions, but hasn't won it yet, Nana. I'm surprised you even put money down on Chris. Like, because you were just telling me these people, and I was like, wow, okay. I, what made you want to bet on Chris? Because he's got a six and a seventh place. I'm not sure what you remembered. Uh, I guess you just like the odds. I like the odds. I also remember, I'm actually, now that I think back of it, it's not too long ago, right? 
June 14, 2021, exactly. I actually remember he didn't play aggressive at all. I was thinking between him and another player from Austria, and then I put the other guy, and then you were like, oh, I bet you're happy that you didn't put money on Chris Boots and stuff, because he wasn't playing very aggro. He wasn't really playing to win it. But you know what? Unlike you, Nelenoko, I'm not here to make enemies. I'm here because I believe that people have their aggressive days. They switch it up. They don't want to be predictable. So I think Chris is playing for the W today. Let's just go ahead and take a look at his hands as we only have five minutes left. And this is actually a... Uh, it's sick. This is a ridiculous one. This is just disgusting. It's sick. It makes you want to throw up. Talk to me, Nanoko. But if you look carefully, man, Simon Matson, Darwin, he flopped the full house. He gets raised on the river and just calls. Doesn't repop it. Now that is some discipline, right? Like, because he only loses to pocket sixes, in my opinion. His opponent has pocket sixes. Really sick to not lose more chips here. I think I lose more chips here all the time, Rowdy. Uh, you do too, maybe? Absolutely. Yeah. I think a lot of us would. But <laughs> apparently, uh, <laughs> yes, the, yeah, apparently Simon, not one of us. But there's still a disgusting river, though, because you flop the boat and you still end up losing the hand. It's like, come on. Yeah, for sure. It's brutal. But uh, well, let's take a look at the rest of the profiles before we run yep. out of time. Next up, we've got our Brazilian stud, our star, Bruno Vogman, one of the absolute highlights of the entire first season. Wow, he even ended up top four, by the way. I know Bruno was crushing, but I didn't know it was top four kind of crushing. I thought it was more like top eight, or top ten, something along those lines. But as you guys can see, he's doing incredibly well. He's, he's done well in pretty much everything he's done. He's been very fun. Had a couple of weeks where he was a bit slower, but TLDR. Bruno Vogman is fireworks. He's always a joy to watch and an amazing poker player. This uh, bottom right side looks hella sexy. First, first, second, and some proper monster scores too. Let's go ahead and take a look at one of the hands that Bruno had this week. Also, a pretty sick one, Nenonoko. Uh, I don't know where these setups are coming from, but... Uh... In there, he's like, well, I'll just call. If he's got 10, he's going to get lose all his chips anyway, so if he's bluffing, well, he can lose those chips. He did lose all those chips. It is boat over boat. Sick, sick turn card. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Moving on, as we have two more profiles to cover before our cards go up into the virtual air, we've got Sergio Ido. And you said that you're actually quite familiar with this man, right? He's second on the all-time money list uh, coming out of Spain. We all know that Spain has plenty of decent poker players. So talk to us and tell me something about Sergio that I will never forget. Um, uh, I mean, that you'll never forget. I mean, he, he plays in Macau all the time. Uh, he plays the cash games there. He plays the tournaments. He is actually a cash game player turned into a, one of these high stakes tournament pros. Uh, he's just sickly. He plays a Triton. You can see this little video here. He just doesn't play the, the GG Super Millions, but this season, it's different. Have you ever gave him, or did you ever give commentary on him while he was playing in the Triton series? Yeah, for sure. Um, but I don't remember which tournament it was because I don't think he did very well. Oh, no, he did. He, he, I, I don't have time. Maybe I'll talk about it a little bit later. But I remember there was one big hand he played, and it was just so, so sick. All right. Well, we can take a look at another hand that is maybe not so, so sick, but it is one of these hands <laughs> where I wonder, how the hell did he win so many chips? The man flops quad seven, and he actually gets his opponent to put in quite some chips on the turn and river. Oh, for sure, right? He raises quads. Just check. You know, I bet the flop of quads, you know, let your opponent hang themselves. And that the checks is what's getting the opponents to put in more chips. And the river, the opponent bets. He raises, gets called by a pair of fives. Just thinking, look, who checks a big hand on the flop? Sergio did. He won a lot of chips for doing it. <laughs> and that means we have one last player to talk about before we hop into our live poker action. Our short stack coming into tonight's final table, week five of our 10K season two, is Yuri with the very not Brazilian sounding last name, but he's still very Brazilian. As you guys can see, he's a two time WSOP bracelet winner. He has won the high roller Super Millions. Absolutely amazing heads up back then against Michael Adamo. Probably one of the best we've ever had. And we've had a couple of very good ones. But if you guys ever feel bored, Take a look at the week that, uh, well, just type in March 23rd, High Roller Super Marines over at GG, the YouTube channel. You'll find it there. That heads up was sick. He calls off with fourth pair, but he folds trips correctly. I Sometimes I lay in bed at night, Nano. I look at the ceiling and I'm like, how did he do it? I still don't know. But let's just take a look at one of the hands that Yuri had on this journey to this final table. 
when he does come in as a big short stack, he did flop a set of eights. Never been flopping sets in this uh, pre-show, huh? Well, he does uh, check call, check call, jams the river, um, just randomly on the, just hoping his opponent calls because it looks scary. He thinks his opponent's going to check back. Did not. Uh, but yeah, he doesn't have many chips. We don't need to talk about him too much, do we, Roddy? Probably not. Let's go ahead and take a look at our seat selection uh, process that's currently going on because that's actually uh, sometimes quite fun to follow. Yeah, we hopped into the beginning of it, Bruno Volkman. If you guys aren't familiar with final tables over at GG Poker, obviously it starts off with the shorter stack, and then you can just rotate around. It's kind of like a little chair dance you used to do in high school. And then the biggest uh, chip stack can choose his final position, so he can take position on whoever the hell he wants to this final table. This gives us time, then, Noko, to do our little prediction game. I'm leading in the sets. You're leading in picking the winners. I am definitely leading in picking runner-ups. And I try to get a fair scoreboard between us, you know, where it's like, let's actually pick people that if they get far, but they barely lose the heads up, you get something for it. You didn't want to play that game. And I know why, because all of your picks just crash and burn immediately. And who's going to win it this week, mate? Roddy, we've got a side bet on it. So I'm winning right now, as I can see. I get first pick. A lot of good choices here. Man, I'm looking at Mr. Gamble. I'm looking at uh, Simon Matson, Volkman. Like, seriously, like I like all three of them. Fast. Um, Wait, and don't, don't cheat, mate. They're going to get aces soon. Go ahead and okay, pick. Okay, okay. You know what? I'm picking Mr. Gamble. That's my pick. He's coming with a lot of chips. I'm going to get him before you. Uh, I don't know. He's going to win it again. You were wondering if he was can win again? He's going to do it. What's your pick, Roddy? That was my pick. Then... Uh... Uh, you know <laughs> what? I'll go for Simon Matson then. Let's see if he, he right. can become our first two-time champ of season two. I feel you knew I was going to pick Mr. Gamble as well. Anyway, shuffle up and deal first and could already be some trouble as we've got pocket tens on the gun. Simon Matson has pocket eights. Yeah. Um, yeah, but that's why I, I get to pick first on all the odd episodes. You get first on the even episodes. It is what it is. Maybe he'll flop a set of eights here. I mean, and come in. Mr. Gamble's going to get involved too, isn't he? Yes, but it's kind of weird to call here, no? If under the gun opens and then a middle position calls and then you're calling from uh, the cutoff too. It's kind of yeah. weird. So it's either like you raise, but King Queen is a little bit weak for that. Uh, Would have flopped the best hand, but can't blame him. Why'd I pick him? Just would have. He'd be the chip leader right now if he had called that hand. Uh, but no, I def that's a good point because I was thinking, oh, it's a standard call, right? But the more you I thought about it after you said that, I was like, oh, maybe it's not so standard. Because Simon Matson, the smooth call here too, is quite strong uh, mm -hmm. against a chip leader in middle early position. And, and this could yeah. be a fun hand. We can obviously not fold tens here against a single overcard. So mm -hmm. I'm expecting this to be check. Bet. I like the bet already by Simon Matt. Somebody is going to call. And that 10 is actually, oh, excuse me, the extra king is actually a pretty good card for our chip leader, Sagabrak, because how likely is it that your opponent has a king if there are two kings on the board, Nananoka? That's for sure. Uh, Simon Matt here has two eights. He's got to be a bit worried, so he's just going to check. Can Klaus get a value bet in here? I think he can because if king i would expect to bet the turn a lot a boat i would expect to bet the turn yeah i like this bet a lot and jacks plus they three bet me pre-flop brilliant mm -hmm. let's see a high level play well done feels like he's got a very good read on the hand let's see if simon Metzen actually folds his eight realizing that there is a very good chance that he's going up against nines or tens or jacks it's it's tricky he needs to think about, does he ever just get floated here? He thinks well it's done. not, and that's a good fold. Good board. Really, yeah, this high-level play by both of them. In the first hand of the night, some solid poker there. Obviously, Mr. Gamble's going to kick himself a little bit for not getting involved with his king-queen. His strip kings would have definitely been good. Patroni. I feel like he's going to be the start. Is he going to be the start today? The guy who plays the 10-8 suited is going to show you how it's going to done. What do you make of how we ended up sitting at this final table? Like Mr. Hmm. Gamble kind of by himself. Simon Watson does have a crazy Uruguayan on his left, but uh, Klaus taking position on Meow. Yeah, so let's think about this. Klaus, he, Klaus had final pick. 
Mm -hmm. um, but he doesn't play these tournaments that often. So maybe there's a chance he doesn't know Mr. Gamble. Maybe, because you would think you'd want to take position on Mr. Gamble. Or I'd even I'd take be, I'd, Yuri spot, where you get position on Volkman and Gamble, the two most aggressive players at this final yeah. table. And away yeah, from that's... Simon Matson. I think he maybe he doesn't know. Because Mr. Gamble, he only plays high stakes. Klaus doesn't normally play 10Ks, it seems. Like, it's very possible they don't run into each other. But why would he... Yeah. But his logic could also be, let's just be far away from him. Because mm -hmm. out of the, the big stacks, I fear Mr. Gamble the most. So you take your pots with those two, three guys, and then I'll take the pots with the two or three guys on the left of me. And then be aggressive against them. That could also be reasoning. Yeah, I can definitely see that too. Um, it it is tricky. Um, we can look. Mr. Gamble, he took position. It looked like I'm not sure what his plan was. The game plan was he trying to take position on Ramiro? Was he just trying to get away from? I mean, you can't get away from the chip leader. Technically, the chip leader chooses last, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, no, I don't. It's actually quite hard to commentate on this uh, seat selection thing because I think it seems very well dispersed. Our first set of the evening, as Simon Metzen flops a set of threes, Miao tried to find something pretty with his 6-5 of diamonds. And he may look at this and be like, oh, it's not all that bad. It's pretty bad, mate. It's going to be hard to win this one. A 5 or a 6 would be real bad news. So this is your pick, Matson, huh? Where you're getting pretty good odds. Better odds than Mr. Gamble. Flop the set. He's going to be back in it. Is he going to get a full double here, Roddy, somehow? Like a five? Yeah, that, I mean, that's the only way. If like a five of clubs rolls off or something. But this might actually be a little bit gritty. It seems like Simon is under the impression that Meow has hit that ace. And he wants to get some money in this spot. Meow would just let it go. That always feels bad, right? You flop a kind of a hidden set on the big blind. You want to get some chips in there. And then you get nothing. Nada. But no, I think it's fine. Because like... On the ace high board, there's no overcards, so people don't go as crazy against them. Ace jack and ace queen. I'd love to see me out throwing a three bet here. I think um, Sergio Ido's stack will raise fold off 20 big blinds a decent amount under the gun still. Ace queen. Close out the action. Yeah, I like a three bet. I don't know. What are your thoughts, Roddy? The thing is, when you three bet a guy that's that short, it does feel like it becomes almost an all-in or fold game. On the other end, it is 20 big blinds. So yeah, I think it's a solid play. And he actually just takes it down immediately. I think the rest of the table takes notice. It's like, ah, you're opening off 20 bigs under the gun and you're folding to a 3-bet? Notice. And a, <laughs> I'm not sure if you noticed, it was a tiny 3-bet. He made it 4.5 big blinds. So you made yeah. pretty much double his stack. And you saw he snap-folded. So I would... If I'm the other guys, I'm like, well, if I three bet Sergio later, I'm gonna make it this tiny size too. Don't need to risk more. Mm -hmm. But those extra big blinds do really hurt when you are playing 600k chips at this point. So, yeah, they and they know that these guys understand the the final table tournament life value of ICM. So it makes a lot of sense here. Pocket sixes, Matson. I think he's gonna get some action from Anderson. I Round feel like one. whenever you have money on Mr. Gamble or Simon Matson, tonight is going to be scary because you just know they're going to get involved a lot. And there's going to be a lot of moments where you're like, uh-oh. <laughs> I might have picked... I was thinking about picking uh, Darwin, uh, Simon Matson for the final table pick. Then you're like, hurry up. I was like, all right, fine. I'm just going to go safe. Go, Mr. Gamble. Uh, but I really wanted to do it. And I was like... Then you're gonna pick Mr. Gamble. I'm gonna regret it if you get points on the leaderboard. Actually, you'll you'll overtake me by a decent margin, uh, because when I picked the winner, he only got a couple points. He had too many chips. You picked uh, Fiesta Pagano, right, to win it that week against yeah. Ben, and he was chip leader, so mm -hmm. uh, I didn't get as many points on that one. Hey, you're too worried about these points. The season is long. I Dude, bet that uh, Simon Watson is going to be surprised that he won this one, by the way, with sixes on this board. You're like, all right, <laughs> it's something. But it's like we're in week five, mate. It's going to be a, it's going to be a one-year thing. I pick winners a little bit later. I'm a slow starter, but you've seen what happened last season. I was picking winner after winner. Like as soon as we're past week 20, mate, like, don't worry about it. I don't. Week 20, you're going to pick like maybe one winner. 
by then. That's what I did last season. Only Arthur made it <laughs> <laughs> in the first 20 weeks. All right, here. Hey, Simon's going to smooth call here of Ace Queen. He's got 40 big blinds. I think there's more value in Ooh. flop in top two. That's a good one. Flop is almost like too good. You know that there are going to be cards that really hurt you. Because if you have it all, what can your opponent possibly have? I wonder what yeah. Simon does. Don't forget that he already 3 bet the trees. That was when he was on the big blind, so it was a bit different. They did have the hand with the pocket 8s and pocket 10s. Our very first hand of the evening. Yeah, it's um, you kind of want to raise because of the board. Then you're thinking, if I raise, man, I'm representing such a strong hand. And what can my opponent have? I'm holding the ace and queen, so calling seems decent too. Uh, he is going to raise. Just hope. Hope his opponent has like ace king or like some hearts. It's going to get quick fold. Yeah, makes sense. Calling there with king 10 seems a little bit ambitious. You're hoping for a jack that's not a heart. It's like, well, three outs, baby. <laughs> exactly. And these guys are uh, not afraid to get involved. I know we're the chip leader and everything, but under the gun plus one, opening up queen eight of hearts. Little bit out of line, Nano. It's a little bit, yeah. I told you he, he's a, he's an aggressive player, but I feel like Darwin's in every single pot, right? If he is getting pocket eights, ace queens, and stuff like this. So it, it looks like he's putting a lot of resistance because we just started our, our little stream here, so... They don't know he's actually picking up some reasonable hands right now. Goes check, check. Let's see what Klaus does with his queen eight. Nothing really to go for. There's literally no good river card other than the queen. I guess with a queen he'd feel all right. But... Yeah, he's just, he's given up. He hasn't bet the flop, hasn't bet the turn. I think Matson might want to throw a third pot out here. Just try to... Deny some equity. Seems like he's got the best hand. Here we go. Throws in a couple chippies. So now he doesn't have to show. Everybody needs to wait 30 minutes until they can figure out what the hell is C. Darwin playing each and every single round. A lot of mediocre aces and kings this hand. It's all like ace yeah. 8, ace 5, ace 9, king 10, king 9, king 4. Mr. Gamble probably is going to take it down. If I'm Mio, I'd be like, you know what? Take it, mate. I don't need to win every hand. So Meow satellited in. Yeah. Curious to see how he plays through, throughout tonight because sometimes, usually in the past, season one, satellite winners, they've been very tight, right? Season two so far, they've been ridiculous. Hey, it was... It's go time for Yuri. It's, and go time for Yuri. That's true. And well, we're off to the races, I guess. I don't know if any aces or nines have been folded. Can Yuri start the journey of a magical run? Six is still good. There are so many outs, but the sixes are still good. No ace, no nine. That looks like a pretty good card to me. That's a queen, right? That is a queen. The Safe. sixes will hold. And Yuri, not with a full double up, because he already paid the blinds and stuff, but hey, almost at 10 big blinds, Nenonoko. One more double, and he's back in it, baby. My guy runs so bad. Can't win a flip. Unlucky. Oh. Ooh, Sergio can be very lucky he didn't open there. Yeah, his ace awesome. ten. Yeah. Um, who was the guy the other week? Was it last week where Anatoly. the satellite went? The satellite oh. player was so crazy. He yeah, I know you talked about the king eight offsuit with the weird flag, right? Yeah, the country. Remember, I was like, there's only one Liechtenstein. What was his <laughs> yeah. name? He I'll, was I'll so look up. Crazy. Because I remember all the satellite winners in season one were tight, right? But season two, they've been just ridiculous. Just going for it. He had a, uh, a pretty... It was his only final table, right? Obviously, so far. So. And he got GG all of those Liechtenstein signups, too, after that one. And he made a big profit because, yeah, he turned a thousand bucks into 180k. That yeah. was his score. And he was he was like so epic. I feel like every final table should have that guy just because he he Goldo Goldo Goldo. Yeah, it was definitely Goldo. I'm like looking at the list. I'm like ah yes, Goldo. <laughs> Queen nine is gonna duke it out with nine eight of diamonds. Neither player flops anything here, and I feel like yeah. that should. I mean, no, I'd say that should favor C Darwin, but you 
people from Uruguay, I feel like they're pretty stubborn too. And I wouldn't even hate it if he throws in the two big blinds here with Queen 9. And let's just play a turn. You might just think the Queen High is good. I mean, but yeah, it's King Deuce Deuce. When you call though, you do look pretty strong. Well, that's a sick call there. Just Queen 9 high. Matson, turn to flush draw. Now he's got to think. He doesn't think a king would ever fold. He doesn't think a deuce would ever fold. But is he getting floated enough by queen highs and ace highs that will fold to another bet? I think so. That's a tiny bet. That's all he needs to bet because he doesn't think a king will fold. But he thinks queen mm -hmm. highs will fold. You don't need to bet too much. I think at this point, if you're a Miro, you also want to make sure that Things don't get weird and big for absolutely no reason, right? It's like, what if he did have a deuce? What if he does have a decent queen here? Like, what the hell am I doing? Why am I burning chips? I really don't hate the call on the flop. I think at this point, we can start consider folding. Yeah. I still like the call on the flop, though. I think it's already. You got a good pick here, man. The guy's already ri rising in chips, playing every single pot. You're feeling good, Roddy. I know there's only nine, there's nine people, but he's he's definitely here to play, like you said. Of course he is. If he does win, then I get points on the leaderboard, but I don't win final table betting. But the night is still young, Nananoka. We haven't even made it to our first hour yet. We've got Ace-Queen battling it out against sixes here, but Ace-Queen should just take it down. I think today is very open. I have no idea how it's going to play out. Has Chris played a hand yet at the bottom? I don't think he did, eh? You put your money on the wrong guy. You should have put some, put that money on Simon Matson. I think you'd feel a lot more better about your bet right now. You know? I feel like this is one of the two turn cards that will actually give us a river card as well. Oh, Mr. Gamble checks the ace queen here. Did the what do you flop, make of that? I know the flop a bet went in. Was it? I'm gonna assume that he, Mr. Gamble, checked the flop and check called right. Oh, oh man, no! Brutal. Why did Mr. I pick Mr. Gamble? He's running bad. Yep. Now, uh, this doesn't have to be a run out where he needs to go broke or anything, of course, but there's a good chance and he's going to pay off. There's only one question here, and that is how many chips is Klaus going to bet? I think like a, a 220, 240 kind of bet here. Oh, there we go. pretty much right in the middle of 220 and 240. I like the bigger bet because they don't think you've got a six too, six too often. Like who flats a six and mm -hmm. who would have put a flop bet in with two sixes hard to imagine so you look like you got a bluff a lot of times there are three clubs on the board wow, wow. mr gamble just full say screen like it's absolute garbage i mean he also played the hand like it was garbage because he really didn't want to get too many chips in i feel like there were ways for mr gamble to win that one of course but we didn't get there let's make a correct fold on the river pretty impressive yeah, that was that was pretty impressive too. Like you th would think he would have lost more in that pot. Idols out. Nice walk for nine and off suit, I'll tell you that. I do believe that we have our little promotion running again where you guys can head over to the community tab at the YouTube channel. So if you just type in GG Poker in YouTube, you'll find our YouTube channel. And then there is a little community tab where you guys uh, could have picked. What we are going to flop today, pocket fours into a set, pocket fives into a set, or both of them or neither of them. Last week, most of you guys picked neither. Pocket fives could have made not one, but two sets, but they refused to play the fives. Pocket threes already made a set today. They end up getting played every single time, apparently, for some reason. Chris has played a hand. You asked for it, and he's played it. He's flopped best. Yeah, but... It's not the prettiest flop ever for Queen Jack of Hearts. Yeah, you love to see that check from your opponent. Like, okay, free cards. No real reason to bet, in my opinion. I think you just want to try to get that free card. If your opponent checks again, now you can definitely bet the turn, though. I think. You can. I probably would just keep checking, though, because... Wow, unlikely. what my happened to you? Gonna... Who are you? Who no, are man, you? You got Queen Jack. Like, it's an ace high board. Your opponent might have, like, an ace rag that's just trying to show it down. Like, betting doesn't really do anything. So he does check again. That's what you want to see. You don't want to get to show to... to you don't want to bet the turn and get raised. And then, because you obviously got outs to clean out. That's a snap call, Queen Jack. Yeah, now you got a call, though. Because this really doesn't make that much sense to me. 
yeah. Um, you got Queen. <laughs> it's the best you can hope for. One bet is all you got to pay off. I yeah. don't really see. Oh, he folded. All right. He out leveled himself. Just thought his opponent had an ace rag, like an ace five suited or something. Wow. Oh, my God. Kings and aces. Where? Oh, ho, ho. there. No, 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 go there. Yeah, it seems like indeed maybe the, the weak ace thing that you were talking about, maybe that's what Chris thought. And then if your opponent has a weak ace, but he suddenly makes trip aces on the river, it makes sense that the weak ace feels like a strong ace all of a sudden. But moving on, this could be a very, very big hand between Ramiro Patron and Mr. Gamble. And it's so now you get aces on the button too, Nenonoko. Does it get any better than that? This is the dream. Yeah, my pick is rising from the ashes. Well, not really from the ashes, but he's rising. Is there a way we don't get it all in preflop? No, nah, because even if, I know there's pay jumps out there, but it's just still nine people. The pay jumps are smaller. Yuri, he's yeah. short, but you got kings and you're out of position. When you're out of position, it's. So do we make it like 600K here or something, or do you just jam? You're playing 40 big blinds. Hmm. I think maybe like 610 would be a good race. 610 is half your stack, so they don't think you're folding. Yeah, you got to go small or jam or call. You can't go 600k. He's giving the chance that he could 4-bet bluff this stack, and I think he can. Aces, though. Do you jam or do you call? I think you jam. And just pretend that you have a, a good old ace-king, ace ace-queen. Well, obviously, yeah. a screen probably wouldn't do it. A screen said it, but he calls with the aces, and they both have a spade, too. I mean, it just gets worse and worse for Ramiro Patron. If you look at this board, and you're like, well, no ace, and I've got a king of spades. It's pretty good, Nanonoko. <laughs> He's obviously not worried about the six, the sixes, deuces, and threes. It's a four bet pot. He's not worried about his opponent flopping a flush. He's got the king of spades. Like, this is just one of the best flops you can get. Yeah. Well, there, there is that one with the king. That that one is probably the one that you really look for. Yeah. But... That is in the set, but it, it's just amazing. Yeah. Um, gamble, two aces here. I think I just call. You hold no. an ace of spades. The reason I say is you hold an ace of spades. And say your opponent can't just make some crazy play and call off of like ace queen offsuit with the queen of spades. I think it's always really funny when the preflop action goes up to like 400k and then on the river you're like or on the on the flop you're like 150 and it's like hey what happened to betting 400k huh now ramiro does seem to be a little bit concerned about what mr gambo is sitting on i think at this point ramiro knows that he's going up against aces or queens right oh, oh my, god. my god saved right because Wow. Yeah. Did Mr. Gamble not win more chips in this spot because of the ace? He would have lost it all. Wow. Like, what kind of an ace plays the way that Mr. Gamble has played so far? Just ace king with the ace of spades? Ace queen. Yeah. Ace spade queen clubs. Yeah, I can see it for sure. Wow. Wow. Obviously, Gamble's going to bet, but can Ramiro all here? Like, it's, yeah, I don't think so. I mean, I'm less worried about aces now because there is an ace on the river. <laughs> I might be like, all right, either he got here with an ace king or an ace queen, or he's trying to steal it from me because I look like I've got kings. <laughs> it's a four bet pot. So we don't have hands like king, queen, once, once, no, no, those no, hands no. would just fold pre. So, like, what does Romero be? Honestly, I think he's be here a ton. He beats like, queens. That's what he beats. But then does Queens bet the river? Probably not. To steal it away, maybe. Because you seem to be concerned about the ace. Yeah, but like I'm trying to bluff one hand, but as a no, I would never I don't think he would ever expect his opponent to bet with two queens. It'd just be quite okay. crazy. I think Romero should be able to get away from this. It's just Are you, are you telling me we don't out. see crazy on these final tables, Nanonoko? Don't we see crazy each These and guys every are solid. Week? They're smart too, Rowdy. Okay, they're not. Let's just be crazy to be crazy. They're going with theories. What's going on? It'd be impressive. 
be really really impressive if Ramiro does not bust here not only because of the pre-flop but even on that flop you'd also think you know on the turn he checked on the turn yeah, I, if check. I have kings yeah. there with a king of spade man I'm, I'm jamming in a, in a heartbeat does make the call wow. though Nananoko makes the call with kings I really think that he thought his opponent had queens with the queen of spade and turns his hand into a bluff. I think that's the only nah. logical explanation for that call. I think Romero just, just wanted to see. He had one of his thoughts like... Yeah, but you can yeah. see it in 30 minutes. Come on. He you, held his you cards at the a... muck and was <laughs> like, I know I'm beat. No, he did not put his opponent on queens. The reason is Gamble would have jammed queens pretty flop. Almost 100%. It's vulnerable hand. Yeah, I just, I don't know. Just he had kings, he just couldn't believe it. Now yeah, you said Gamble would have folded Queen's preflop. No, he would have jammed uh, four okay. bet. He would have five bet yeah. jammed or whatever. I it thought was. you said fold. I'm like, what? No, okay. <laughs> well, I mean, I feel like if you, I love how you just have a speech about how they're solid, and now you're telling me that he just paid off. Uh, what was it? 14 inch big blinds on the river because he wanted to see. <laughs> like, I mean, I don't know, Cal. He could have seen it 30 minutes from now. I don't think that's good reasoning, mate. No, no. But I think he should have got away. I guess that's the thing. Mr. Gamble, he gets paid extra value when you feel like everyone else, they would have just snap folded to, right? Because earlier we saw it in pre show. Like, he, the Jack 7 suited, he's got a full house. He's just gets all this value. That's what you get to be when you're aggressive. I mean, it's, it's very easy, of course, when you see it all. If you're sitting there with kings and you see that flop and you're holding the king of spades, there's not a worry in the world. You're like, I'm not going to lose his head. There's no way. So I can sort of get it. He's still with us. He still has 11 big He's lines. That's more, yeah, it's more than what Yuri has. So in that way, it's good. Nice bet here, by the way, by Klaus here with his jacks. Wins another one of 10 big blinds. Pretty sick hand. 100% should be out of this tournament. He still has 10 big blinds. And that's a huge win. How come no one emojied after? It's one of those hands where you see it and you're it's like... It's too tense. It's too tense. <laughs> I've seen in live poker, right? Like some crazy hand. Just, no one doesn't say anything. Just dead silent. Just like, we don't want to needle him. Well, that's the way it should be. Ace-10 is going to jam... Don't think he's going to get any action. So picks up a couple of chippies. Ramiro still more than double the stack of Yuri. Obviously for Yuri, every hand that gets folded is a painful one. We've got an ace-queen offset here and an ace-10 suited in the small blind. Now we know that Chris doesn't get too out of line, but these hands are a little bit too pretty to fold against the chip leader, aren't they, Nana? They are. I think he will fold though, because if he looks at the other stacks, there's three guys with some pretty small stacks. He's sitting in a good spot. Like, yeah, but you also worth know that the extra and... big blinds you'll take down. But that's going to motivate Mr. Gamble to open up a lot of hands that are a lot I weaker agree. than Ace 10, too, though. Well, he does just call here. I'm not sure if I love it from the small blind. It's still like, it's Ace 10 suited, but it's not like it plays amazing post flop. You flop a 10, there's an over cards, you know, like, I don't know. Well, he gets to see a flop, didn't see anything he liked there, and just lets it go. Yeah, I, I guess three betting is maybe a, a bit YOLO, because then if your opponent jams on you, you're like, damn it, Yuri is so short, Sergio is short, Ramiro is short. We've got a very weird dynamic now, where even Bruno Vorkman, in a way, is somewhat short. And then it's just Mr. Gamble and Klaus have all the chips, and then Meow and... Uh, See Darwin are like, hey guys, we've got chips too. But the rest really doesn't have anything. Yeah, they're sitting across the table from each other, and they're the ones just going to raise all the time. Pocket deuces and threes, but queen five suit is going to raise, I think. Here we go. Like, he's just playing every pot right now. Deuces out, threes. Tricky hand to play. I think I would fold these. He can out fold. Well, he calls. But the reason I thought that was there's two guys with 10 big blinds behind and wasting two big blinds a little bit more often than not. Doesn't play amazing. Hmm. So Klaus has been checking a lot as when he gets flats. Pretty much against every every single flop, I think he's checked, right? Yep. He raises checked a lot. But he doesn't get crazy. 
Checked with the tens. Checked uh, with the jacks, I believe, as well. But it's then still willing to get some chips in. We have the three of spades, Nanonoko. Yeah, it's it's a lot, actually. You had no hope on the flop. Still nothing. I don't think you can go for value with this queen five. This is more of a check. Hope I got the best hand. But the other, I was going to say on the flip side, do I want people to know I'm opening queen five suited in middle position? So there is some value in betting. It's kind of mm -hmm. like, don't show my hand. Maybe I get called by worse somehow. Yeah, could have been uh, like a jack 10 open from the chip leader or like an ace jack, an ace 10. So there were definitely a couple of hands that the threes were beating there, but... Well done by Claus. That means he is uh, retaking the chip lead. Now he has ace nine offsuit. He's not afraid when he just gets into the mix. I do expect Mr. Gamble to defend his big blind jack eight. It's not all that much, but we're closing the action. So we may as well see a flop. And we decide that we don't like the flop at all. <laughs> Mr. Gamble, he's, uh, he's also a cash game player. So he's going to be very comfortable with these, these big stacks against other big stacks. He's going to play post flop. Queen 10 of clubs is a lot prettier than a lot of the other hands, but Yuri is actually going to jam under the gun. He's going to get it through. It's probably one of the worst hands that he would consider jamming there, but yeah, Bruno Volkman can call it all with sixes. Bruno's going to show a card, I think. He is going to show a card. Right. Yeah, because this is, what, four big blinds? Yeah. He yeah. shows two cards. I'm, I still got it, Nananoka. I still got it. Yeah, this is a emojiless table, so no, 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 no. They will come. There's going to be some emojis between Mr. Gamble or if Bruno gets it all in, there will be some emotes. Ace five is also going to jam. Bruno Vorkman has a hand where I think you you want to think about it, but it's just a bit too much, right? It's a little less than ten big blinds. It's half of his stack. He's behind against every ace. Yeah, it's a lot for a final table because Sergio Ido isn't jamming too wide because well it's a final table you're thinking about it there with his six big blinds obviously one in the middle already and decides that he lets it go jack seven not good enough mr gamble's got nines meow yeah. has fives this actually yes. could be a feisty yes. pot if the nines don't raise this is going to be a fun one they're not going to raise no i'm free rolling a set right here we're going to hit it whoever else pick yeah. fives will hit a set today it's oh. gonna win. Some people we, say I don't know what we fives. win, but we're winning. Some Come people on. say pocket fives are the new pocket fours. Yeah, oh. makes the call. does not flop a set. God, they hit it twice, two times last week. This I love how we, we the... play it, and we don't miss. I love it. how we're the worst commentators ever, by the way, because Mr. Gamble did flop a set of nines. This may seem relevant information to the hand, Nanoko. Oh man. He's going to bet, uh, just going to take it down. But brutal. I'm so salty. I think Mr. Gamble's a little bit salty about that one too, though. You, a set of nines ain't easy. And uh, King Queen. King Queen Suda Jury's got to go for it here, right? When you have six big blinds, especially if Bruno opens, like. Whatever, no matter what money. happens, he should be getting in. it in. Yep. Man, King Queen, he might actually get called though. He might actually get called by King 10. This could be a big hand for Yuri. Now, obviously, if he doubles here, I would call with King 10, man. If I have that many chips, come on. And it's four and a half big blinds. You might have the best hand. You're yeah. not too far behind. The opponent it's an easy call. Queen Jack. Easy call, but Claus will receive the news that he is behind. A king obviously doesn't change anything. Oh, no! <laughs> The 10 on the turn. That's oh man, I'm tilted actually. I'm tilted. Just... My 46 to 1. There is an emote for you, mate. A so sick. Yuri is out in an absolutely gross manner. It's uh, rigged, Nanonoko. Rigged. Brutal. And Yuri could have got a pay jump because of those ace and kings. The guy didn't bust. <laughs> Just out first. That's expected. Pocket jacks for Klaus, who is now our slightly more dominant chip leader. I don't really want to get too carried away. They have so many chips, man. They he's got a hundred big blinds at our final table. That's ridiculous. Yeah, he's he was flatting earlier. Now he's just decided to re take the initiative. 
Ace five suited though. It's solver I, special, man. But like yeah. it's a final table. But it's the kind of hand where you can full up godlike without your opponent being aware of it. Mm -hmm. Like trip fives, just clubs, a deuce three four. I wouldn't hate a call here, actually. Like you know you're behind, sure. But I wouldn't hate it if he decides to see a flop. In a catch game, that'd be a standard call. Um, but because we're playing a final table. Like yeah, but I think that's why he No, I, I get it, Nanonoko. But let me put it like this. If you're wrong there, you go from 90 big blinds to 86. Like, is that really a man overboard? No, it's not 90 to 86. It's 90 to 80. Because that was a big three bet to like nine big blinds just now. So he made it 330k. So it's a bit bigger than normal. And yeah, I don't know. I, I, I think it's a standard call per, in the cash game. But you got to remember, Klaus, the three bet there is a little bit stronger too. Because Chris is sitting on... A stack where he'd have to call off the final two with 200k. Okay. Would you call that one big blind here to see a flop and just go for it? Because I think I would. Just one big blind, see if you flop top pair or any pair or any draw. All right, now we fold, of course. But I like that call, actually, by Ramiro. I think it's okay. You want to be calling the big blind if you're playing the pot heads up. So let's just say someone else flatted, then I'd be folding the hand because it doesn't play anywhere near as well. Um, I mean, it's not a great hand, but like heads up, you always got a chance. Mm -hmm. Pocket eights for the Mr. Gamble, but it's going to be very hard for him to flop a set this hand as Meow has an eight and Simon Watson has an eight. So if he does flop a set, we're going to seriously stop this final table because something be very wrong there. Pocket eights has been dealt like every single hand today. Mm -hmm. Where are my pocket fours? You already had your free roll and I didn't. I'm triggered. Ace Deuce could jam here and Sergio does jam. I actually like to see that. And like Ace Deuce is obviously not exactly the nuts and you can say he could just outweigh Ramiro, but I like it. Well done by pocket Sergio. Pocket fives, yes. And Matson, he's going to smooth call his Ace Queen for yes, free roll again. He's got to hit it. Come on. Don't you dare three bet this. Don't you dare. I think we do one. Oh, my yeah. God. All right. Oh. Ooh. Swing and a miss, mate. <laughs> Swing and a miss. For the people who are just tuned in, we have a side bet on which hand makes more sets throughout the season. Pocket fives or pocket fours. I took pocket fours and then I took pocket fives. You had to pip me. It's okay. Thinking that the fives will play a little more often than the fours. Doesn't matter, mate. Doesn't matter. I should have picked those threes because I think we were discussing that threes yeah. hits more sets in season one and three already hit one and it's all flopped today. So I'd be on the leaderboard, not on the board. Well, not just today, actually throughout the weeks. Uh, I think if we would have kept track of the amount of times that threes would have flopped the set, I think it's already three or four times in season two. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot for sure. I mean, technically fives has hit sets. Just no one sees a flop with them. So today, flop check today, check, pocket. Right? Pocket fours are going to flop a set today. I know it. Or turn a set. We're going to flop or turn a set. So they go check, check that Matt's in plain solid. I mean, Fiesta Pagana is doing uh, quite well so far. Started our final table with, what was it? Uh, double check. 1.2 million big uh, chips. And he's got 1.7 million chips now. Very solid performance so far. Ace-Jack versus Ace-10, and one of the 10s just got folded in the small blind, so this could be bad news for Meow. How come you didn't ask me for advice on who to bet, do the final table betting on? Because when you didn't ask me for advice, you picked the guy in last place, and he's out first. I did ask you for advice. What are you kind of. Mate, I, I, let, I gave you all the chance in the world to talk to me about something you felt good about, but you just spoke six minutes about how good seven of these players are. Like, yeah, <laughs> what can I do with that? Uh, good point. Check, check on the flop. Mail's got the ace 10. I would check this 10 of diamonds on the turn because it's hard to get paid by, by worse. And you can do some bluffs from just non-diamond hands. I said it was going to be hard for me out to win this hand, but he has found a way. <laughs> Who needs to flop at a uh, 10 when you can just flop four diamonds, apparently? Or turn four diamonds. Yeah, that's never going to get called. But um, now that you've seen Klaus play a little bit today, 
would you have consider putting a bet on him instead? I know he's a chip leader. You don't like betting on chip leaders, but I don't. I don't hate. No, 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 no. I do like betting on chip leaders. I don't like betting on chip leaders and the guy in second and the guy in third because then they all have the same odds, and that's why you're just burning money in case one of the shorties wins. So I feel like when it comes to the big stacks, the low odds, you got to pick one of the three. And I still think I pick Mr. Gamble because I love Mr. Gamble. Mr. Gamble's in the tank. It's a wow, big bet. He calls ace jack high, no diamond, paired board, everything. Just thinking you wouldn't bet this big. That's <laughs> bad. Wow, that's a nice value bet with the 10 of diamonds. Really well done. Pocket fours, jam it, mate. Jam it. Get called by Jack 10. Oh, Jack 10. Oh, come on. That was close. Jack this is seven. so dangerous, too, because the tiniest jam is so likely to get called around and you get five cards that's like actually the best scenario uh, pure pain pure pain come on meow back then the flop's all right should have given us a flop there now good bad by him obviously with the a stand but that's why i think it's kind of funny now mr gamble just calls up a similar size bet to compare to that three bet before with ace five and uh you know he, the potential with the ace five was absolutely massive we have deuces and kings this time. Deuces fall though, so I don't think we're going to see that much. I imagine if he would have flopped massive with the ace five of clubs. It really wasn't that many chips compared to his stack. And now he just calls off with ace high on a four diamond board without a diamond. Like, come on, Nana. Then we may as well have called the ace five of clubs. Well, he thought he had the best hand. I mean, he just hoped his opponent just went for it. But uh, I think the, the bet sizing threw him off there. And I'm just well played this meow. He, he's got some moves. He's got pocket kings now. Not the best board, but not the worst. Yeah, it was a big blind, a little bit scary, right? Because you're worried that your opponent has a six. Could very well have a six, of course. Could also just flop a pair. Could flop a super random two pair. You don't always worry too much about it. But now your opponent's betting into it. I kind of like this, actually, by Simon. Just to bet into the pre-flop razor. Kings all of a sudden... They feel a little less good when the big blind bets into you on seven five four rainbow. Yeah, and um, he can represent. He knows that board hits him more, so he just did take a stab. It's like, how can Jack ten call you on the flop? You know, like now that he's got called, he thinks his opponent does have something, which is obviously true. Two kings. That's a big bet again. <laughs> this time, Mister Watson, C Darwin will let it go. So Miel's actually doing a really good job in just maintaining the stack that he came into this final table with. Even increased it a tiny bit. I started this uh, FT with 2.2. He's a 2.4 now. I got to correct you though, Roddy. It's not Watson. It's Matson or Matson Sorry. or something. Did I say Watson? You've been saying Watson like, like Sherlock Holmes is around. He's not here. I apologize. I don't know why I said Watson. I know it says Matson everywhere. You miss Mike <laughs> Watson. We used to see Mike Watson all the time at our final tables. He used to be the guy who keeps getting ninth, eighth, and seventh. Maybe that's what it is, mate. And Ramiro decided to see a flop with Jack Eight of Diamonds, and I can't blame him for it. He obviously doesn't have a whole lot to play with, but once more, just not a flop that he wants to send it. So he's going to be forced to fold one more time. It's weird, man. Has Bruno played a hand yet, mate? I feel like Bruno hasn't played anything. No, Bruno has not played a hand. He's just waiting for these guys to bust. They are super short, so it does make sense for him not to play anything but really strong holdings. Uh, Volk, you know Bruno and Mr. Gamble? We know they're aggressive players, but they have a, a lot of gears, right? Like, they can play really solid. They can play a little bit tighter here and there. Um, that's what makes them very dangerous. You're not sure what they're doing. But as some players out there, they literally only play aggressive, mainly Michael Adamo. You know, he doesn't actually have a calm down button. Um, so Bruno Neither does chill. Romashka. So, so. Yeah, correct, Romashka. And Goldo. <laughs> Goldo is quick too, yeah. <laughs> king Queen versus King Nine. Mr. Gamble decides to defend his big blind. A really ugly flop for King Nine offset. We are getting uh, closer to our first break, of course. After every 55 minutes at GG, there is going to be a break. But since we commentate the final table with a 30 minute delay, that break starts for us at 9.25 Central European time, which is in 11 minutes from now. It's been a very sweet first hour for a chip leader, man. Yeah, 
Seems like he's involved in a lot of pots, but when you think about the pots oh, he's played. Bye bye, Ramiro. Bye bye, Ramiro. Okay. Sorry, mate. No, no, that's not good. Uh, yeah. He's going to get done by the guy who aces and kings them, too. Brutal. Mm -hmm. This is where Mr. Gamble turns into an anime character. I'll finish what I started. <laughs> Poor Ramiro. Pretty brutal run for him. Came into the final table in fourth place. So. Probably had pretty hopes and dream, pretty big hopes and dreams about today. It's gonna have to find a ten. Now we did see a stand beat, whatever it was earlier. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Two outs. Needs to. More. Oh, we can chop more. We can chop. Maybe that's actually a pretty decent turn card. <laughs> that could be. Oh, 10. oh we chopped. It's it. a nine. Yeah, nine or a ten. It's all Gucci. Oh, on that flop. Still chopping, then that feels like a double up to me. <laughs> He's free rolling again, man. Like, he, he should be out two times. Chris is starting to get real short. He's entering 10 big blind territory as he looks down upon King Jack of Hearts. Oh, that's tricky, man. Like, cause... It, it's Jamar's fault, in my opinion. Of course, I would, but I just okay, yeah. I like it. If this is tough for Ace Jack suited, you still got five people to act behind you. Three of them has the same, like a tiny stack. I think it's a fault for Ace Jack, actually. I'm thinking, I agree. I think if he's a little bit like near the button, he could probably call. But here it's like. Yeah. Because imagine you call, it sucks. Imagine you jam and somebody else actually wakes up with queens or kings. It's just the absolute worst, yeah. I mean, he would have gotten in really good, but I can completely get behind this fold of Ace Jack suited with these positions and these uh, chip stacks. I think it's well done. Oh, Romero, he's back. This guy, oh, I thought he was going to get action from the sixes. Mm -hmm. Is there any action from Anderson then maybe? Five bigs? Not many kings or queens have been folded though, so that gives me the feeling that he's going to, well, can king, queen, offset even call here, to be honest. I think he can. I can see him folding too. I yeah, really I see can see him ways. fold. I can see him call. I can see him fold. That's actually kind of a tricky spot for Mr. Gamble. I feel like if he if this does go to all five cards, King Queen will win. That is my prediction for this hand, Nanonoko. Alrighty, let's see. You're the guy who knows it. Yeah, how do you know? Jeez, well, that's because like nine other <laughs> two set cards. Like obviously we know the odds of King Queen against Tens, right? Oh, Tens are a little bit ahead, but Ramiro does get eliminated in eighth place. Walks away with forty-seven thousand dollars. Obviously, nobody hoped for today. He came into this final table with one point five million chips, but like I wonder how much the odds change percentage-wise if you know that there are fourteen cards out there that won't be shown on the flop. But then none of them are a king or a queen. Like, then king-queen just becomes the favorite against Tens. And pocket force just folded. Could have got it in. Yeah, Who folded? Volkman. I don't fault him, though. I fault him. <laughs> why, would you, why would you fold the set preflop, Nanonoka? Alrighty. Let's see. The Volkman, he's, he hasn't played a hand, but he's, he's got no. two page jumps so far. He's waiting for the, the other two. But to me, this is starting to feel like one of these days where the shorties are kind of killing each other. Maybe Simon Madsen, guys, not Watson. I apologize for calling him Watson. I have no idea where that came from. You can actually get a decent pot going here with Ace King versus Ace Jack of the chip leader. I thought his name was Charles Darwin. Isn't that what you said? His yeah, real name? Everyone is. No, but you, you know, the funny thing is that after we did our final table, where we called him Fiesta Pagana because that's how he was labeled. And mm -hmm. we got instructions to just go with Fiesta Pagana. Everyone came into my chat the following day. And they're like, hey, have you figured it out yet? That it's C. Darwin. I was like, yeah, guys, we figured that out a while ago. But if they tell us that we go with Fiesta Pagana, we're going with Fiesta Pagana. Ooh. That's uh, Big just playing by, the, playing by the rules. Yep. Ace Jack and Ace King, neither player flops anything. But having the Ace of Clubs on a board like this, Nano, it gives me some comfort. Yeah, he's a bit uh, suspicious to call up Ace Jack off. So not a great hand, but, you know, it's, it's okay. I feel like he's getting played back by Matson like, all day so far. Yeah. This bet, I feel you got a call. 
Yep, you can't fault for... Oh, and that is a turn card and a half for Klaus. He's still behind, but at this point, it doesn't even feel like he's behind. This is where almost the Omaha logic applies, where, hey, man, I've got the ace of clubs, baby. <laughs> I know that you can't possibly have the best hand here. I do. Yeah. Well, for Mets, and us, it's hard to just keep firing away, right? You got a million chips, three guys with 10 big blinds and less. You really just going to blast off of ace, king, high? Loss. I would love it just, just betting. Yeah. yeah, I like that bet. I was thinking maybe 300k, but 258. I think it gets the job done. Really solid bet. Even though he's betting with the worst hand, an ace of clubs feels mighty powerful. It's it's very very powerful. Obviously, the ace and jacks could be good too. It's Matson. He doesn't have anything. He's out. And this is definitely also because Sergio is that short, Bruno's this short, Chris is that short. That's why you really don't want to. That's some poker. Yeah, become well the biggest hero. Well done by Klaus, man. He's playing excellent so far tonight. Bruno, my gem. I mean, a he's got to play this hand. He hasn't played a hand yet. Yeah. This is going to raise it, and his raise is obviously going to get a lot of respect. Under the gun raise over short stack. I actually wouldn't hate a call here from Mr. Gamble, to be fair. But yeah. uh, he thinks it's too strong, though. He was <laughs> like, is this one of those funny hands? Yeah. This should be interesting. I'm curious to see if Gamble continues with his 5 ops suit. It's eight big blinds. Yeah, wow. snapped, actually. I'm in close. Are we going to chop it? Yes. No, we're no. going to scoop it. Diamond or five. What about a four or a deuce? Yeah, it could play, right? Oh, diamond. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> it is a diamond. Mr. Gamble wins it with the ace high flush on the river. And that means we say goodbye to Sergio in seventh place as he walks away with $60,000, I believe it is. As Chris has kings, baby. <laughs> yeah, this actually sucks as well. It's like, what do you do if he min raises? That looks so strong. So the only thing you can do is jam. But if you then get no action, that also sucks. I always want to see him limp, Nano. <laughs> Force the big line to see something and get cooler. Yeah. Um, yeah, mm. you just got to jam it. Hope for the best. Chris does win one, does get another pay jump. Now guaranteed top six, $77,000. Ace eight will go into the muck. Let's see what Meow does. King 10 in the small blind. Let's see if he's willing to battle with our chip leader. He's got over 4 million chips. Still over 100 bigs, Nana. This is... how. When do people have 100 big blinds one hour into our final table? They don't. Unless they've destroyed everyone, right? Um, just the chip stack is so dispersed. So many short stacks out there. Wow, Klaus just iso raised the jack 3 offsuit. Flops best. And easily bet. You can just bet 120, 150 here. And all the king highs and queen highs are gonna fold. Exactly. King 10 off suit could be the best hand, but I would prefer to have the king of diamonds a little bit stronger. Like reverse mm -hmm. those suits. I feel like Meow knows exactly what's happening, but on the other end, he's like, I've got two million chips, man. Wow, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> The raise, the check raise on this board. I mean, Klaus is actually the one who raised it three flop, and he did flop a pair. And he wow. gets the three to fold. Well done, Meow. Hey, in the pre show, we already got a bit excited over the way how he played his jacks. Let's go, Meow. I love it, mate. Well done. Sick hand. Tony, these satellite winners, man, they're just playing for it in season two. That was, a, <laughs> that was an excellent play. I love it. Oh, I love it. It really does feel like you see like the little guy fighting against the big guy. <laughs> <laughs> Meow's like, like they see the pre-show. They're like, this guy's satellite. What are you going to pick on him? They've been trying to, but yeah, definitely knows what he's doing. Just doesn't normally play 10Ks, I think. Chris James, ace, queen, offset. Wins a few chips, but 
It's just, uh, it kind of sucks whenever you don't get anything more other than the blinds and your premiums, though. And like maybe sometimes you pick up a min race, but if you get your ace queen, you get your kings, yeah, you're hoping for that full double. So you can actually go from 10 big blinds to 20 plus, not from 10 to 12. Because then the blinds go up and you're back to nine again. Like, oh, ace queen, ace jack. Oh, you? Man, Mr. Gamble. But he's been lucky. Can he get lucky this time? Again. He has been lucky, but he needs to get real lucky here. This is a mandatory rejam of Ace Jack, too, I think. Uh, I don't think it's really that close. Unless he's like super suspicious why Chris is taking this time, but this is. This is Snap, right? Yeah. Here we go. Off to uh, the races that are not totally fair. Ace Queen versus Ace Jack, both offsuit. Obviously, we can always chop it. Well, there you go. But another seven, we chop it. A seven, nine, or a jack is what Mr. Gamble is looking for on the river. Missed could it. be a seven. It's an eight. Oh, awfully close. The eight is no good. So Chris finally gets that double that I was literally talking about before the hand starts. And it is time for us to head into our first break. That's an annoying one for Mr. Gamble to think about for five minutes. But he's a veteran. He's a two-time champ. I'm sure he can handle it. We're down to seven, and we'll see you guys in four minutes and 40 seconds. All right, Brent, this time let's mark our comeback with the return. How's that sound to you? A $50 buy-in. So that sounds good to you, right? Because that's something even you can afford, yeah? Well, let's not get carried okay, away. Okay, I probably okay. need half from maybe you. But, uh, yeah, let's return, Jeff. We'll just add that one to the tab. Day one's in the lobby now. Day two is this Sunday. And Brent, hit me with the guarantee for this one. How about a million dollars guaranteed? A $50 buy-in and you can win a bracelet. A cool million sounds good to me. Hello everybody, Daniel Negreanu here with some good news from the GG Poker Network. We've been preparing a promotion for the new year called GG Care. As any poker player might know, sometimes you find yourself in what we call unfortunate situations you know, some ugly bad beats, right? Well, that's where GG Care comes in. GG Care will take care of you with huge prize pools available every day. Let's see how you can get your GG Care benefits. Aces versus Kings, yep, all in before the flop. I mean, nobody's gonna fold that, right? That's just a setup, it's a cooler. I can't imagine being, you know, at the final table of the World Series of Poker heads up and this happening to me. It's just brutal, bad beats should never be a thing, but eh, they are. Thanks, GG. I flop the top set. Very nice. Some fucking idiot chases a runner runner straight to suck out on me. Unbelievable. But in my darkest moment, GG Care was there. Thanks, GG. Flop the second nut set. The middle set on the flop. It's an impossible cooler. How can you be beat there? The guy has top set. Nobody's folding that. Sometimes it just feels unfair. Thanks, GG. As you can see in the most unfortunate of situations, GG Care will appear for you. Are you curious how to get these benefits? Don't worry, you don't even have to lift a finger. First, simply enjoy the game as usual. Whenever something unfortunate happens, GG Care will be there. Secondly, when confronted with such circumstances, GG Care automatically will register you into a flip out tournament with a huge prize. Just check the pop up window. Thirdly, take a rest, have yourself a nap, get yourself a good night's sleep, clear your mind of all the bad beats, and when you wake up, the daily GG Care prizes will be waiting for you. That's all there is to GG Care. Pretty simple, isn't it? Just play the game as normal, and GG Care will take care of you. And the prize money will only grow more and more in the future. So keep your eyes posted and good luck, everybody. I hope you don't have too many bad beats, but if you do, GG Care will be there. Thanks, GG. was waiting to come back to the final table. Fedor holds things. Oh my God. Michael Otamo is the best.
Welcome back to the second hour of the High Rollers Super Millions, the weekly 10K that takes place on the Sunday night. And we cover the final table on the Tuesday night here over at GG Poker's YouTube channel. I think I said we're down to seven, but obviously we're down to six. But it kind of feels like we're down to two because Claus and Mr. Gamble have pretty much all the chips. But at last hand, it shows there is plenty of fight left in Mio. Yeah, for sure. Um, maybe this one be a little bit quicker. Who knows? Because we know last... Uh... Last episode was pretty long, but this one, it's just flying. But maybe because everyone's so short and we are cooler in people of aces and kings. That's going to do it. Let's see if Meow is going to open up his king queen under the gun. He is. I don't think Bruno is going to do anything with his nine dues in the big line. So we actually had quite a few hands happen real quick in the final seven or eight minutes before we head into our break. And obviously at this final table, the blinds don't go up over time. They go up based on the amount of hands we play. So the quicker the hands are, the worse it gets for the short stacks too. It's bad news for Chris. But I, and Meow doesn't strike me as the guy who's going to make it big here or 3 bad at all. I think he might just call and see a flop. Yeah, and calling is actually a pretty good option too. You're closing action from the big blind. I think you're more likely to 3-bet from the small blind. It was out flop though. Yep, that kind of sucks. It's only bottom pair, but there's also a backdoor hard draw. This is a, technically a decent board for Chris's range, so I think Chris can bet and maybe just take it down. Yeah, kind of tricky, too. He's going to just fire just a little bit. Just hope it just ends right here. But when you get caught on the flop, man, you, you don't know if you're up against a draw, pair. It's not a good turn card. No. Seven eight is obviously a possibility for the big blind, especially with the way that it's been played. Wonder if Chris just checks it and he does. Another king on the river means his pair of sixes is still good. Meow knows at this point that if he wants to win this hand, he's probably gonna have to bet it. Unless he's up against ace ten, but that's not the case. So the ace six of Chris is good, and he wins a few more. Lots of more chips than Chris has had all night long. Maybe that $25 on bet, bet on Chris wasn't all that bad. Yeah, it's not looking too bad now. It's, uh, he's got two eights. Everyone gets dealt pocket eights. My gosh. Mom, I'm wondering where Simon Matson's chips went because he's, he was sitting all right. 1.8 million <laughs> grinding away. He lost ace king against ace jack. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of, for a good amount of chips too. Mm -hmm. Might win a couple back here though with his ace queen of clubs. He will be up against the jack ten of spades in the big blind. Can't believe I'm sneezing my heart out here and not even a bless you from you, Nenanoko. I thought I meant something to you. No, nope, we're not still not gonna get one. Maybe next year. Maybe. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> we enter season three of the High Roller Super Millions, and I sneeze my heart out. So bless you. It's like wow, <laughs> finally, <laughs> I've been waiting for this moment for so long. It's not a very good flop for ace queen of clubs. Chris does have the jack 10 of spades. Well, no way in hell we're ever folding here. Yeah, I guess the question is should you check raises his hand? It's reasonable. Uh, it would put a lot of pressure on Matson. You can represent the eight. Yeah, I like the check raise actually. Now, can Matson call here of the ace queen? Especially because oh, the bet was so small as well, right? It doesn't feel that strong when they bet that small. <laughs> it's a small check raise. He is going to let it go. Um, I think if he had a spade, he wouldn't be folding, though. Bruno, a little over 10 big blinds, king, queen of spades. I think I'll just open rip it, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Why make things complicated when it doesn't have to be complicated, Nanonoko? Blinds do go up. Big blind is now 500k. We've got ace king in the small blind. I uh, wonder if he tries to go for the limp jam. He is sitting yeah. on 14 big, so like it's kind of a funny stack. I like the adoption. I like limp jamming. He's going to rip it in. 
maybe not the worst because you did obviously see Mr. Gamble call off some of the shorter stacks before with the ace five and that kind of stuff. So if Mr. Gamble has any ace there, there is a very good chance that he does call. Matson, can he be in trouble in the spot looking for a reshove? It's a good hand to reshove. On the button He's too, right? Eh? Sitting big blinds. It's not really a stack you can flat call too much. This could be some bad news for PS Tipagana. Yep. Also your pick. And Mr. Gambo has a king too in his small blind, so that's more bad news. I don't, I didn't see many clubs though, so I feel like the clubs are kind of life. We know Matson's aggressive. You go for the win. I feel like he's gonna jam this one. It's like when it's close, when it's suited, you just go for it. He is gonna go for it. I don't see how Meow can fold this though. Like if, up against fifteen big blinds. I think you're right. I think he's just going to send it with ace-queen. You're not yeah, like, no. woohoo, but sometimes you just got to call. The cards the cards and stacks play themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it makes sense for me that he's thinking about it, but I also think he's going to call. Like, folding here seems criminal. Because if yes. you're folding ace-queen here, then you're just folding almost everything. Pretty much, yeah, everything. I guess <laughs> you got to go for it. Here we go. Well, Madsen's at this point, Fiesta Pagana, Simon Madsen, C. Darwin, call him how you want it. He's in trouble. Are the clubs live? Nope, that's a terrible Dead. flop. My goodness, is that a bad flop? And that is going to be the end of the man who's already won it once in season two. We are down to five. He does walk away with $77,000, but I think he was expecting maybe a little bit more. He came in fifth, goes out in sixth. Not quite what you're hoping for. Nah, and he played fine. He was actually involved in quite a lot of pots um, here today. So someone's got to go out eventually. Bruno Volkman got another page up. He didn't expect <laughs> that. I feel like Bruno literally hasn't done anything other than like two jams in pretty obvious spots. Yeah, I think he should jam this A7 suited. Um, wow, he flat calls. I don't know if I love this. I guess he thinks that... No, I wouldn't jam because I still think he's got yeah. fold equity because Klaus has been opening queen five suited, queen seven suited, yep. and stuff like this. Now he's finding an opportunity to potentially lose his pot. I don't really like that flat. I but I, I can tell I you, his logic, you his logic was I think I'm gonna get called, so maybe I can maneuver post flop. Wow. But he does, does call flop. on the flop. Now that's even more interesting, perhaps, than the call pre flop, Nana. Yeah. Um I think Klaus is going to be so scared right now. He's like, this yeah. guy's for sure. He's got aces or he's got like king queen or king jack. He's got a straight, oh. um, but. That's a lovely run out for Bruno. Yeah, he should check. He needs to let his opponent have the chance to bluff off of jack high, queen high. Put him, maybe they can put him on a king queen, king jack. Yeah, he does make the check. Will Klaus take the bait? Can we get some Jebedits in the chat? If he does bet. And he does bet! So now wow. Bruno can just call off. I mean, we're never, ever, ever folding here. And Bruno just got the weirdest double up. Well, we questioned the call pre-flop Nananoka, but there was no way that he would have won this many chips if he would have just jammed it. Wow. Yeah. All right. Welcome back, Bruno Volkman. That's a, that's a hand and a half, mate. <laughs> You know, in season one, he's played some pretty crazy pots too, right? He got paid value and, you know, whether it's heroic calls, heroic bluffs. Um, he, it's safe to say he plays a little bit different than some of the guys out there. And what works for him, we can't recreate. We can't reproduce it, right? So hats off. 950K. Now he's firing away of King 9. Yeah. I mean, this is the first time tonight that he's playing 20 plus big blinds. So now Bruno is like, hey. I can start opening some hands, maybe pick up a couple pots. It's going to be hard to pick up this month. Chris has been getting a lot of premiums tonight, by the way. Sitting on two kings. Thinking about three. And suited, and they're flopping up and down with a, with a backdoor flush draw. You start getting worried real quick. Makes sense that he raises. I think jamming is a bit excessive. But what happened? Could be a fun one. King Jack on the bottom, deuces on the big blind, and a weak ace in the small blind. I'd love to see Bruno Volkman reshove this pocket deuces. Um, Chris has obviously been raising more hands ever since he's got the chips. Really? Would you do it? 
two deuces yeah for sure you have way too much fold equity um ace eight wants to play just to gamble just felt like he hasn't played a hand since the break hey we've got a new chip leader by the way and it's meow <laughs> <laughs> that's so there's, sick there's three vet wow big play from mr gamble ace eight offsuit Meow 41, mate. I think he knows what he's doing. He's played real well tonight. Yeah. He hasn't played that many hands, but he's played, he's won every single hand he's played, I feel like. Yeah. <laughs> Which is perhaps a more important statistics. Wins 100% of the hands he plays, showdown or not. He is going to defend his big blind, and this is going to be a hard one for him to win. There's really nothing here for Queen Deuce of Heart. Mr. Gamble might fire out like 25%, just try and take it down. Mm -hmm. It's one of those boards where, sure, you don't have anything, but it's very unlikely your opponent could even continue. Which means we have a new chip leader, and it's back to Mr. Gamble. And that's kind of nice, because to be fair, Mr. Gamble was actually losing chips for a little while, but that ace eight getting him a little back. Slowly but steadily chipping away at the lead of the other dudes. And eight of hearts in the small blind, it's kind of a pretty hand, but you always worry that if you call that the big blind does something annoying and then you're like, damn it, why did I lose any chips here? Doesn't happen. And eight flops a gut shot, but I think we all prefer Mr. Gamble's hand here. <laughs> yeah, the powerhouse, just showing how powerful it is. King eye flesh draw, hair, ace high board, like just, just wonderful. I think Meow's hand out should probably peel this flop. Uh, he can hit a, a very disguised straight. Hit a seven. No one's gonna put you on ten eight. You check call. You can represent like ace x if he goes check check on a turn. I like the call. I think it's fine. Two. I was like, oh well, you're gonna check back mid pair now, right? But no, he's got two pair. How do you hit two pair of king six and a club draw? Because it's a powerhouse, mate. You think Ben C B is out there spitting nonsense into this world? No, mate. Ben knows what he's talking about. Mr. Gamble goes big, hoping that Meow has got a pretty strong ace, but that is not the case. And Mr. Gamble will just win a few more chips and extend his lead over the rest of the table. It's uh, oh, by the way, the pacing, Roddy, the pacing of this final table feels so odd to me. But yeah, go ahead. Your your pick to win is out, just in case you forgot. But and, you can root with me, and we can win together. You can win your final table bet, and I can get a. A couple extra points up there. You know, funny thing is, I was very close to picking Meow after you picked Mr. Gamble. I was very really? close to, yeah, yeah. But I was like, nah, I think that's kind of a stupid pick. He's still a light winner. And just because I played one hand where I like the way he played, that doesn't seem like a very good option. So I'll go with C. Darwin. It's always super gambling when you pick the guy you don't know anything about because mm -hmm. he could be crazy or he could be the biggest nit in the world, right? Like, imagine you picked Godo last time. You would have been like, oh my God. But that would actually be a good pick because uh, how wild he is really shakes things up. Yeah, I could have obviously gone for Klaus, but I just don't know him that well. So it seemed like then I'm just bandwagoning on whatever you say. I was like, well, at least I've seen Fiesta Bagana play. And I know that Madsen is great. So I was like, whatever. What is this? Volkman, queen, three offsuit. Like, I know he's got extra chips, but he's only got 13 big blinds. No, but I just think that he still feels that Meow is a satellite winner and is not super attached to his big blind and doesn't want to get himself in too much trouble. So no. it it makes some wrong. sense to me. Yeah, just but... wrong. Because he was check raising king 10 offsuit on nine high boards. And yeah. Yeah, but they haven't seen that hand yet. That wasn't 30 minutes ago. That was the last hand before the break. So he has not seen that yet. Bruno takes it down. You really need to take that one down. He did not want to be left with 450k. But he's king now. But nobody else really has anything. Even though Klaus does get a little creative sometimes, it feels like Klaus really doesn't want to like, does not enjoy losing pots, which I guess is a very good. Uh, personality trait to have as a poker player but it can also get you in trouble see he just defends the king three like he's got a pretty decent hand okay I, I, I can see a flop with this i'm like well there really aren't too many great flops for king three offsuit
Bruno over a milli, over 20 big blinds again. Wow, a couple of decent hands here. Pocket jacks, ace, eight of spades, king, queen of spades, and even the nine, eight suited in the big blind is quite playable. Volkman might, just a chance he makes a move here. He's just, he knows he missed a gamble, obviously from season one. He does make a move here. Um, I mean, I was like, wow, am I really not getting to play this king, queen suited? How awful is that? Yep, it Stay. sucks, but if under the gun opens and a hijack raises it up or cut off. I mean it's basically the high <laughs> the under the gun is the hijack here, yeah, but Yeah, yeah. I hear you. Same thing. Anderson. Well, the jacks are going in. Yeah. Mr. Gamble, not one of these guys that would ever consider folding jacks. Of course, some of those scenarios were a bit different in the past, but I feel with jacks, you have no choice here. Like, seeing a flop is stupid because you know there is a good chance it's going to be an ace king or a queen. So it's much better to just get it all in. Bruno Volkman is going to be a little upset he's picking about this one. But that's the way you play pocket jacks. They say there are multiple ways to play pocket. What? Back to back pocket jacks. jacks. <laughs> there are many ways to play pocket jacks in Raw Run. I really like the way that Mr. Gamble played it there. You raise, you get three bets, you jam them in. It's all good. Yeah, no. Especially against that opponent, right? Like, sure, it's scary when someone re raises you tiny with that stack size, but Bruno Volk, that's just a standard Volkman play. Yeah. I mean, it's also five handed, and you're the chip leader. I think you have no choice there with Jax. It's pretty straightforward. Wells does finally win one again with his king eight on ace ten four. They're playing real quick, man. These blinds are gonna go up quick when they keep playing like this. Like <laughs> we're gonna have your favorite blind level coming up at a rapid pace soon. Yeah, fifty k is a little tricky still for me. I love the hundred k one. <laughs> <laughs> I refuse to believe that fifty k is tricky for you, but you how many big vessels Bruno Pogman has? Hold on, ace jack. Okay. Nah, don't think he can get enough action here. I think you jam ace jack, right? Oh yeah, that's... I thought that was a given, Roddy. I was just wondering if he would get called. I don't think so. Ten more big blinds. Uh, think of Tony G, Mr. Gamble. Never overplay King Jack. Oh, oh he overplayed goodness. King Jack! On oh, your played. bicycle! On your bicycle, no! <laughs> Mr. Gamble needs to find a king or Bruno Volkman gets the full ten. double. Now he needs to find a 10. A king or a 10. Does not find either. Bruno with the easy double. Mr. Gamble not sticking to the rules that Tony G tried to teach us a long time ago against Rolf Perry. <laughs> What's that? Yeah, Volkman just, I feel like the stars always align for that guy, man. Like he didn't play a single hand. Now, yeah. now that he's got all the pay jumps, he's playing all these. He just great timing or something. Didn't he have four hundred k like literally all the time yeah. for an hour? He straight. was just waiting. <laughs> now he's played every single pot too, and not just because he's getting cards. He just wants to play them, right? Like he's playing king nine offsuit, queen three offsuit. I'm actually kind of triggered whenever I have a jack ten and I go up against ace three, ace three, and they somehow flop an ace. It's like. How is that even statistically possible, Nanonoko? Yeah, it's <laughs> should be illegal. Possible. But Jack 10 suited. You see the little nine of spades. You're like, oh, I see another spade here. Wow, what a turn card, man. They both make top and bottom pair. But Miel picks up the flush draw. That's uh, that's quite something. It's pretty triggering, actually, because if you saw these whole cards, you'd be like, how could they hit both cards? Both yeah. cards hit both cards. <laughs> <laughs> really? You guys hit an ace and a three before I hit a jack or a ten, but you might still hit the spade on the river. This is going to be fun, man. I have no idea. Like, imagine if you missed a gamble here, aren't you like, what? <laughs> Why are you betting six big blinds now? Yeah. Still playing 23 big blinds behind that. That's a lot of big blinds, so I don't mind his just call here, trying to control things. Yeah, I'll just uh, snap folds his jack high flush. He's like, I want none of this. Yeah, it was a big bet. Um, Chris, the Queen of Diamonds is not the best card for him. Scary but card. His opponent did was a pre-flop raiser, so probably has a little bit less flush draws. 
It's actually scary for Mr. Gamble, though, because he's like, man, this guy have a flush draw. He got there. Better to pair. Yeah, but why would he bet the diamond draw on the three of spades? Yeah, he could. Oh, this is a small bet. Wow, this could get real funny. I'm just going to call. <laughs> Nothing is real funny with Mr. Gamble. Just call and see where we're at. <laughs> yeah, I thought that's a haha -ha moment when you have the same hand. When you're different thing. I could have predicted that haha. -ha. Bruno Vogman is going to open up the sevens. I'm still on top of my emoji meta, even if I haven't grinded the same amount of hands over the last two weeks as I did before. But I still know when people show and when people emote. I was looking Hello? at the um, the World Series schedule or whatever, and I saw, I think there was like a fifty dollar like huge yep. prize pool one. Like, how many? Do you know what the guarantee is on that? Like, I'm wondering how many people it needs to get. It has to be huge. I uh, I can take a look at at, at it for you because I actually saw that too because it's pinned at the top of the tournament lobby. So I'll just open the. I actually I'm always afraid to open the GG client during the show because if it's already over and it's only like I'm like I right, congrats you picked the winner I'm like oh no I don't want to see that but there's no way it's over already so you can go ahead and do that real quick I saw it too fifty dollar ring event yeah. what a life it's it's actually happening right now. Wait, is this like just a day one? Yeah, this is day oh, one. Oh, no, B. stop. Forget it. Forget it. Kings versus aces. Oh, Mr. No. Gamble, no. What? Just I mean, eventually, eventually kings need to beat aces, though. This is bad for both of us, Roddy. Wow. And it's a big three bet, too. So that also makes it more likely chips are going in, all of them. No wow. short stacks out there, meaning more likely they're going to get it in, too, because they're not a little concerned. Like, wow. Gamble. It's not over. There's still five cards. That's what you always tell me, Roddy, but this is looking like a, a class. Yep. Superior chip lead. The tournament's over kind of thing. Just calls. But I don't think he's looking to fold. Running diamonds? Do you see what I see? No, I see bye-bye chips. Maybe an ace, though. I can see an ace saving Mr. Gamble. He's like, ah. It's like Ramiro. Still two more cards to come. The bet is a little over four big blinds, or almost five. Mr. Gamble could obviously just call here. He doesn't have to raise. Small bet. He is going to go for the raise. This is just, just bad. Mm -hmm. Are you ever worried I... here with aces? No. I'm, I'm like, if you've got jacks, you've got jacks. <laughs> that's You're pretty much it because i don't yeah. think sevens is calling me for that big size i don't think threes is calling me why well, he just calls here um but now if you miss the gamble the alarm bells must go off too though because you're like whoa it Did does go off me? but also my opponent could have like a jack two queens jack 10 queen like it's just two kings is still like the nuts to me <laughs> to be honest mr. mr gamble needs a king and a king only as there are 2.7 million chips in the middle he's going to bet almost 13 big blinds on this turn Seven hundred and seventy-seven thousand chips this is a jam of course of two yeah. aces you only lose to jacks really oh oh, oh what a setup second time tonight not the second time this season. We've seen it a couple of times already. The Aces versus Kings. And I think if the alarm bells were not going off before Nelanoko, they are going off right now. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> this brutal. I think he's going to call it off, though. He could be up against those side gets it in. Queens. Disgusting. Mr. Gamble needs a king and a king only on the river, or he is pretty much out of the tournament. That is pain too. Well, it was scary for a split second, but it's the jack of spades, and that means that Klaus gets a massive double. He is the overwhelming chip leader now with 6.5 million chips, and Mr. Gamble is down to two big blinds. Brutal, man. What a setup. <laughs> he lost three point something, three million chips there, right? 50 big blinds. Look at everyone else sitting on 1 million, 1.5. Like, oh my God, that is brutal, Roddy. He's played amazing. That's what happens, though. 
He's over a hundred big blinds again. <laughs> big blind is sixty k, and Klaus is over a hundred big blinds. I don't think we've ever seen that. Uh, now he's gonna knock him out as well with Ace King versus Ace Nine. Jeez, Louise, adding insult to injury. That is most likely going to be it for Mr. Gamble tonight. We're done, Roddy. Your bet's down. Wrong My bet. pick is dead. GG. Well played. Well played, Mr. Gamble. Welcome back to our final tables. It was his first time in Season 2. He came in with a good stack, unfortunately. Fifth place is what it's going to be for him. That means Bruno Volkman is now top four. Uh, Chris also top four. Miao, our satellite winner. And then we've got Klaus Segebrecht, who came in as our big chip leader. Or not necessarily, right? Like, yeah, he had a few he had a few more big blinds. He had 10 big blinds more than Miao, who came in in second place, but jeez. Yeah, but I don't know how Volkman keeps getting these pay jumps. Um, but yeah, no, I felt like Mr. Gamble was guaranteed top two, top three. You know, like he saw his profile, he had a one. A first place, a first place, and a second place, right? A fifth. Volkman, it's I mean, brutal, man. Pay jumps. Meow's somehow. Not, I mean, like, Meow's been playing all right. Just mm -hmm. I felt like he hasn't played many hands, and he's just he's still got 2.4 million chips somehow. I guess he did come That's, in in second, right? I think this could be a fun battle because our chip leader will obviously look at 10 9. It's like, you're not taking my big line when I've got 10 9, mate. It's a hand that plays pretty well. Miel actually going for, oh, okay. Well, that's a flop and a half as we have an open ender and a 10 high flush roll for Klaus. Miel obviously having the ace of diamonds. I think he was looking for some uh, trickery over there with the limp. But Klaus not taking the jibbet. Yeah, 10 of diamonds looks pretty nice too, even though it's not. Diamond, diamond. And the high flush versus the ace high flush. Meow still slow playing. Just checks it. Did he check again on the river? Uh, we saw Meow value bet the ten of diamonds, so he's definitely going to just value bet the ace of diamonds. Oh, he checks. All right, he's just got a different game plan for Klaus. I think the he's ten trapping. of diamonds can can value bet this though. It's often the best hand. <laughs> Now, how big can we make it? If the pot is 405,000 chippies, what can we make it? You want to get called, but you also don't want to make it too obvious mm -hmm. that you really want to get called. You know that your opponent can never have a hand that's better than yours. I, I feel like you have to make it small, like 310 or something. Or you make it real big, actually. You make it seem like... You can't go too big because it'd be suicidal too, right? Yeah. Yeah, like a 400K. Yeah. Now, it's a 10 of diamonds. He's probably thinking, okay, can he play the Ace of Diamonds this way? Would he have just check called the flop? Would he have bet out himself? These are the questions you'd ask. I actually think he's going to get folded here. Or I think Chris will fold, or Klaus will fold. Yep. Nice. Solid, Solid. fold. It does look really strong when your opponent raises you on that river. Well done. Ace, Queen, Ace, Four, and Queen, Jack. All right, Roddy, you still got Chris. You put how much again? 25, you say? Yep, um, on him and Bruno, I believe, right? Oh, did you put on Bruno too? Yeah, oh, I nice. think so. Oh, so you're doing all right then. Not too, too <laughs> yeah, bad. sure, mate, sure. <laughs> Not too bad. Still got two guys in in the final four. You got 50% of the field. You know, I just did uh, how to pronounce... The last name of Klaus. And mm -hmm. it's like, Suchbrach. And I'm like, what? Because, <laughs> like, it could be like Zega, which sounds kind of German. Zegebracht. That could be kind of it. But tricky names, mate. I want to go back to the Eastern European names. I feel like we handle those better. <laughs> the German Hopefully names they get us. And I'm Dutch, which doesn't make any sense, but it's tricky. I like Meow41. I can say that one very clearly. <laughs> Bruno Volkman is also somewhat doable, but don't make it any harder than that, guys. <laughs> yeah. 
Chris's last name is tough. I can't get that. Boots. I think. Oh, aces, by the way. Again? How does the man keep getting aces? The funny thing is that like he could raise so many hands as well that his raises definitely don't look like aces at this point. I mean, Klaus has been super, super solid today. Mm -hmm. Snapfold. Chris, he doesn't get in these trouble thoughts. I am surprised that you didn't talk about the fact that Klaus has more chips than the rest of the table combined, Nananoko. Because I don't know he has more chips. It's hard to tell. 2.6, no. 1.4, 1.47. Like, I can't count these numbers. How do we know what 2.5 plus 1.4 is? 3.9, perhaps, mate. Okay, then 1 plus 1.4. Oh, hold on, hold on. King 4 suited out of line. This is one of his... He hasn't really 3. been out of line, 3 betting. B5.3, Nananoko. King 4 of hearts, 3 betting, the ace king. I actually think Meow can just jam, yeah. That's what he does. Because that's already enough chips, right? You win 420,000 chips without actually having to risk anything. Hells yeah. Let's do yeah. it. You're down to 4. You take a much bigger lead over Bruno and Chris. I like that move a lot. Especially uh, when you're in second place, you want to lock out the play where you got five at jams, like two tens or something, and you're mm -hmm. at risk uh, when there's two guys of half your stack. Absolutely. Well, I think it's a perfect play. And, and there are 33 bracelets, apparently, according to the graphic in the bottom Is it bracelets side. or is it rings? What is it? Well, it says bracelets in the graphic, so I'm going to assume that official it's... Official ones. There might be a mix between like a ring because the fifty dollar I just looked by the way the guarantee is one million for that one so it's a one million guarantee. They don't mix it. It's for sure going to be bracelet. There's no way it'll be mixed because okay. people treat the rings and bracelets very differently. Can you imagine you win the tournament, you get a ring instead of a bracelet? You'd be so pissed. Well, the fifty dollar event mate is called the WSOP ring, so I highly doubt that's a bracelet event. But now you make me want to double check again. Yeah, now I'm not so sure. I'm very surprised. <laughs> Unless it's like literally... the very beginning of the series is rings, but you're selling 33 bracelets. You know how many days you got to play to to play 33 events? So... Well, I mean, it starts on August 1st and it runs till September tw uh, 12th. So that's a, that's a long ass time anyway. I'll take another look at the $50 so a... one. Ooh, oh, look that's at not this a ring. Meow. Limp it's a bracelet. A7 offsuit, man. This I'll guy. take it back. The $50 <laughs> one is a bracelet. Yeah, I told you. But yeah, Meowth, he's, he's no, he's no, yes, he's a satellite winner, but he doesn't play like a satellite. He's definitely a pro. You can tell. Yeah, he's been playing real well. Just really solid and doesn't make it too hard for himself either. Just made like one or two moves and when he felt the moment was right, when things didn't add up. King eight of clubs battling it out here with queen jack offsuit. Flop is ace seven five rainbow. Does Bruno have the guts to fire a little bet on this board? Nope, not today. He might go for a delay bet, though. I don't think he thinks the Queen Jack is good very often. <laughs> might try to, like... I can see him consider bettering that. Betting now, get some King Highs to fold. Some little pocket pairs. Little pocket pairs got something now. <laughs> If this just goes check, check, then it's actually kind of sad because it felt like a hand that was very winnable for Bruno. Right? It feels like almost any bet would have done it. it. Seems weird to start betting on this card, huh? Like... It does. Yeah, it does. It feels fishy. But on the other end, it's still not a very pleasant board to call King High with, right? Because no, what King if High there were sixes? Yeah. I like the bet. Like, even if it feels weird to bet on that three of clubs on the river, I'm okay with it because... Uh, showing down queen high is almost never good there. I like it by Bruno. May not mean a lot to Klaus, but it means a lot to Bruno. Yeah, pots are... They, they mean so much. They have a different meaning based on your chip stack, right? Because you can tell with some of Bruno Volkman, when he's got this chip stack, he... he, he gonna fight for it right but when he's say bruno's got the same like same hand but he's got like 3.5 million you know he might be like oh whatever i lost two big blinds just check or something they just fight for a bit more seven high oh, pair of sixes sorry check call 
Six is uh, turn a gut shot. And nine is good for a straight at this point. Six obviously good. Seven is good. There's a lot in the middle, man. What's in the middle is 50% of Bruno's stack. A lot of times King 8 will check here because we bets he can get jammed on by the stack a solid amount, I think. But he is going to fire probably check back river. It's a nice value bet. 6-7 is just so annoying because you you got a lot of outs, but then mm -hmm. you're like, seems like he's got oh. <laughs> Maybe not that annoying. Bruno Vogman makes strip sixes on the river. I think he's actually going to bet out there. Eh? I wonder what he's going to bet. Oh, he would just jam. Yeah. Um, I'm All just wondering, 15? is it better to just jam yourself or continue checking? I think continue checking is silly because there's a really good chance your opponent checks back. So I think you want to bet out. I think the question is how much? Oh, you'd bet all of it. You've got 900k, 1.4 in the middle. Like if you had a bluff, you wouldn't be going 300k all of a sudden. <laughs> okay. So you take your time and you just rip it all in. I don't think checking is an option. I mean, it's definitely an option, but yeah, he's, he's just going to go for it. And now, Boss definitely would have checked back the King 8. Now he's, he's in got a the spot key. where he might pay off. Yeah, because he's like, I've got the blocker. Did he miss diamonds? You know? What if his opponent well, had like ace five of diamonds or ace seven of diamonds? Yeah, so yeah. in this, now that's a good point that you just said. But the king of diamonds is a bad card to be holding if you're trying to pick off bluffs. Because say your opponent's check calling that king seven of diamonds. Well, they can't have those hands. So he does lay it down. Good fold. Mm -hmm. Runa wins a big one, though. He now takes a, a big lead over Chris when it comes to who is the short stack. And he still has this little small blind, big blind battle with Meow, where I still feel that Bruno feels like he's got the edge because he has been playing hands that I feel like he wouldn't be playing against, uh, let's say, a Nicholas Ostad in the big blind. This is a... Yeah, I haven't seen Nicholas this file this season, huh? But anyway, yeah, it's yeah. a Jack Deuce. This is bad hand. He's playing it because I really think that Bruno feels like he's got a little edge there. And he feels he can win some chips if he just keeps getting involved, no matter what his whole cards are. But we know that Miel does not give up easily. 8-7, flops mid-pair, no reason to fold. Everyone thinks they've got an edge on Miel, but Miel's like, just like winning every pot he plays, literally. Bruno's going to fire again, watch. He's got the little straight draw. Going to try to move his opponent off a of 5 or an 8. I like to see him bet big. Bet. Like, I was feeling it, man. I was really feeling it. I was like, I think he's going to over bet. Because I think at this point, he thinks his opponent could very well indeed have that eight or a five. And now you want to put him in the real awkward spots. You don't want to make it easy and bet 90K and just get called again or 120. But, but eight, again. seven still makes the call. Six is yeah. a funny river card too, though. Meow's so smart. I think he knows what the pros are trying to do against him. And he's just one-upping them right now. Every single time. Send it all in. The I want to win this hand syndrome, Bruno. This one is yours, mate. You've been slow <laughs> playing that strong ace. <laughs> I don't know about that. But I think he's, I think he's gonna go ham here. Bruno I suffers from that, and I think he, it will get the job done. I don't think he thinks Meow called him with eight. I think he thinks his opponent has an ace. Oh, wow, hey. pot size bet. Jesus. It's not quite all in, but it's one hell of a bet of Bruno Vogman on the river. Over 15 big blinds. And Miao has played so well, so solid, made a lot of good choices so far tonight. This is the wow. most difficult one he's had to make. I knew it. I, I knew it. Bruno is nuts, mate. Oh, welcome back, Bruno. We have missed this, Bruno Vogman. Yeah, because he was playing so solid earlier, right? Just something happened when all those guys disappeared. He got those pay jumps. He's like, time for me to play my game. He Meow did not play that hand. He played that hand pretty good. He didn't mm -hmm. just not expect the pot size bet of Bruno Volkman coming on the river card. It being, I really feel that he made that fold and he didn't believe it. He's like, I think, I think I know what you're doing, but it's just a little too crazy to call off there. So Bruno chips up to 2.8 million. And if he would now double up through Klaus, and he'd be the chip leader. And Klaus would be the short one. <laughs> Okay, I mean, yeah, <laughs> nice observation. How much, did I, there? how much did we bet on Bruno? 
25, 25 you told me. Unless you yeah. changed it. No, you no, no, it was 25. 20, and then you upped so, it. But what were the odds? Uh, I was 12.3. Wasn't that crazy, actually. 12.3. That's right. My bet on Yuri was my bet on Yuri was the dreamer one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but 46. that wasn't happening. Come on, Roddy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah, he got it in. Uh, he got it in all right now. Oh man, Bruno Volkman. Seriously, one of my favorite players to watch. Didn't know him really before the the Super Millions. Now everyone knows him. He'd be the first guy to win one in season one and season two if he wins today. And he'd have three wins in total in Super Millions, which would be that too. But that second win has a little asterisk. <laughs> Partial asterisk, but yeah, I see what you're saying. Still amazing player. Oh, absolutely. I'm not saying that, but I don't think it's totally fair to compare it to the three of uh, Michael Adama. We'll call it as half a win, 2.5. Wolfman's playing Jack Six offsuit against the chip leader. He's got a lot of confidence. Plus does win one again. I bet that he's feeling short stack now that he's no longer over 100 big blinds. <laughs> it's like, wow, I'm in the double digits. This is where things get scary, man. <laughs> In general, though, Klaus's final table performance so far has just been solid. Right? He just opens a lot of hands, plays a lot of hands, but he doesn't really get crazy posts. Like, I haven't really seen him, like, multi-barrel and all sorts of stuff. My favorite hand of him was the ace-jack offsuit against the ace-king yeah. of uh, Simon Madsen. That was my favorite yeah. hand of him. Yeah, I agree with that for sure. But in general, other than that, like, he's been really solid and just cruising and hanging on to his chip lead and chipping up. Like, I like the way things are going for him. If I was playing this final table, I was chip leader, and I just do that, like, I make some moves here and there, but generally just really solid. I, I take it. King Queen gets it done. So we're still down to four. Next payout is 127,000. After that, we go up to 163, then a little over 200. And the winner today walks away with $267,000. Meow with the ace five offsuit on the button. I don't mind a little race here, mate. Make it 150 to go. Okay, he folds ace five on the button. Is that Surprising. a satellite? Is that a satellite? <laughs> That's a move, satellite man, play. <laughs> That's a bit of a satellite play, especially off that stack size. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. He's just like, not feeling it. I think after that, he got shook by the blind versus blind battle of Volkman that hand. Can't totally fault him for that. <laughs> Jack 10 versus Queen 10. Obviously, Bruno never folding here. I'm wondering how he wants to play his hand. That's an ugly flop for Queen 10 of spades. Still the best hand. And I think Bruno also knows that this is still quite often going to be the best hand, but not the flop you're looking for. Yeah, I'm not surprised to see that call. It doesn't get any better. Are you still here, Nanoko? Okay. Yeah, no, just watching. You were very frozen. I was like, is he? Is, did he disconnect on me? And it's the Jack 10. Second bet does get it done. Obviously, picking up the 10 high flusher on the turn. Well done there by Klaus, who now has Jacks versus King Queen on the big pine. Could be fun. No, you were legit kind of stuck. I uh, like, no, he... I wasn't moving. I was just yeah. like, hmm. Didn't have anything to say. And then right when I asked you, I saw you blink. I was like, damn it, he's still here. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Big clean. Big straight possibility. Stop set. Mm -hmm. Backdoor diamonds as well. well we're definitely going to see a turn card here. And yeah, that's for sure. Tiny bet. Could be a pricey end, man. If a 10 rolls off or just any diamond. King of diamonds would be a very fun turn. Yeah, it's a lot of... Oh, <laughs> what a turn card. The 10 of spades. That is absolutely perfect for Miao, who turns the nut straight. As Klaus still has a set of jacks. Nananoko, how, pot, how big is this pot going to be? Well, I mean, it's going to go check-check on the turn. 
Maybe not that big unless we boat up. We don't boat don't. up. Yeah, the fact that it's a four straight kind of sucks, right? Like if that eight was just a seven or a four or something, then this pot would be real damn big. But any queen is a straight. Wow, I don't know why he's checking the king queen, though. It seems weird. Hmm. I would have bet for sure. Well, okay. He induced his opponent to value bet set of jacks. Well done. How big How big will he go? I think he's going to go, go real big. big like He'll 820? Go big. No, no, no. Big, bigger than one, that. This one million? This is like one point five million type of raise. Oh, eight forty. I said eight twenty, is... Nano, and you made it seem like it was a terrible guess. Well, I mean, like, what's he doesn't expect to get called by anything but a queen, so he might as well go mm -hmm. for for a big one. Yeah, but you also don't want to make it too big that they could ever consider folding it. Yeah. Definitely more than eight forty. Fine. Well, I'm in touch with my satellite players. Okay. That is you true. Stick, you also you in stick, touch with your emoji players. You stick to the big boys. I'll stick to my 1K boys. So it's all good. Bruno flops Godo, top pair here. Yeah? I think you and Godo understand each other too. <laughs> me, me and Romashka understand each other. All right. Check. Check. There six is no good. Plus is gonna need some help on the river to win this one. Bruno wondering if you should call or raise. He might raise because he's up against a twenty five percent pop bet. Hand mm -hmm. is probably the best hand and a little bit vulnerable. Pretty big race. I don't think you can do much here with five six, right? Feels like there's no good river card other than another six. Yeah, I agree. Like you might have the best hand, but then they have a lot else. Probably don't have yeah. the best hand. Okay. Ten, what does Chris play? Enough... He's played hand? I feel like he hasn't played hand. Well, Chris stopped getting kings, mate. So Chris is playing a little less. This is actually the kind of hand where sometimes they jam queen eight. Because it's like, queen eight is quite pretty. And the chip leader is going to open and raise a lot of garbage into your big blind. Be a bit out of line, of course, because it's still way over 10 big blinds, but funny turn. There is a card that could end it. It's a 10 that's not a spade. Yeah, pretty much. Even a spade, man. I could still get a lot of chips in. Uh, like Chris, is he going to fire? I don't know. I think you just take the free one off. Hope for the best. Well, what is the best? The best is an eight, but he doesn't know that. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay, he's gonna fire. I actually take this pot down. King Queen is a yeah. tough call here, but uh the correct call. Thinking his opponent's on like a 10 8, 10 7, some spades. Wow, great oh call my. to 10. You're there kidding. Is a card. That could end it, Roddy. Yep. Well, the funny thing is, though, that now there is a flush, and it's a paired board, and you don't even have the nut straight. So Yeah, it, but Chris it, is the one who's been aggressive. He got lucky. You think he's going to start checking it now that he's been aggressive no, I, with nothing? No, he hit his hand. He hit the dream card. He's going to hope for a slow play nine, or like an ace. Ace. Not, not the dream card, mate. It's the nightmare card. I wonder if he just... I feel He's like all bet. three options are there. Like I feel like he could bet small, he could go all in, and he could check. Checking would be so sick. It'd be actually so sick. He'd have to think he's up against pocket aces or something. Like checking would just be insane. Okay. Bye -bye. Well, snap called and Chris puts his out and Floss gets another big one, two point two million. Oh my goodness. No no, there is a card that could end it all. And even the ten of spades, and he gets aces again. All right, that's the third aces this hour, I believe, or at least in the last uh, seventy or eighty minutes. Yeah. We're down to three. I think pretty good run by Chris overall, right? I think uh, he came in with a kind of a small stack. Came in in sixth place today, top four finish. 
nothing to be too upset about but nah, i'd be yeah. ecstatic if i was chris like getting uh all those pay jumps like it was a it's a tough pay jump race to be honest um yeah he did pretty well down to three where Claus has more chips when the other two players combined once more. Doesn't quite have his 100 big blinds, but if he gets to work in the next 10 hands, he can do that just one more time before the blinds go up again. It's been a dream final table for him, man. Like every single time I feel like he was on a tiny downswing and he was bleeding out some chips, he wins just a monster pot. Yeah. yeah. Obviously, the Aces was the biggest one. Three million chips sent to his way to take out the... I would arguably one of the toughest the toughest player at the final table. Um yeah, but he's up against Volkman. Like and Volkman's got chips. Volkman with chips is a beast. And to be fair, Meow, he's uh he's actually outplayed Klaus out of position somehow in those blind versus blind spots a little bit here and there. So it's it's not easy pickings here. And they got a lot of chips, both the other guys. Yeah, but it doesn't feel like a lot. <laughs> It is though, because 35 big blinds is so much to maneuver with. Um, you know, it could be a lot, of, it could be a grind. Like these mm -hmm. guys we could be here for a long time. But every time we say that, there's some three to six million chip pot happens, you know, but uh, yeah. What an insane. Oh, poor guy bets his queen eight on the turn. I think there's Gosh. only one good card for me. Hits his 10, goes for all of it. Get snap called by You're the like, highest rate. Maybe the ten of spades will save him. Ten of spades got him done. Yeah. <laughs> like, well. It definitely meant that any ten would have got him, but yep. But you can get snap called there. Like you literally don't even have to see what your opponent has. You already know you're sure. beat. Like a hundred percent of the time you're beat. Yeah. You want the tank call. Yeah. That's the one where like my queen eight is good. Does he have a nine? Does he have a strong <laughs> ace? You know? Whatever. The snap call is never good. Meow Don't wins. Play uh... his opponent. Nine three mm -hmm. suited. It's actually twelve big blinds heading his way. Not bad. Yeah, this is gonna be fun. I don't know. I just feel like some more Volkman stuffs happening. Like you can see, he's just like when he started this final table, like he. He wasn't ready. He didn't have the oil in the car. He was just like chilling, trying to get the petrol, right? Now he's, ever since he got that one double up though, like he's been involved making his moves. Just timing is just perfect for this guy. He came in in seventh place today. Bruno Volkman came in seventh. At that point, I think you always sign for a top five finish. Well, it's a whole lot better than that. It's top three and he's still in uh, the lead when it comes to this spot too. But it's kind of a funny board. You don't feel real good about your A7 offsuit here. Both guys should be happy to show this down. Yeah, that's, this will get shown down for sure. But Roddy, from now mm -hmm. on, the rest of Season 2, Volkman makes another final table. you got to put more than $25 down on the guy. Mate, I know he came in 7th place. He came in 7th place. Yeah. I was I've actually... seen you put a lot of money on the bottom guy before. Come on. Yeah, that's when I was like running hard in 510 Omar or something. Like, I haven't been playing that much. Like, 25 bucks on somebody who comes in with less than 30 big blinds. You could even say that's lighting money on fire, okay? Don't you dare to say that that was not enough. Because if anything, that's out of line betting in the first place. Uh, I mean, yeah, he's not. I mean, he's in third place out of third. But, like, if you had 12.3 to one, like, any money is good, uh, any stack size at this point. Uh, well, yeah, right now, 12.3, obviously. Like, if I would, if you would tell me, hey, he's going to at least make top three and he's going to have three million chips, yeah, sure, I'd put more money on him. But I feel like now you're forgetting about the part where he was at 400,000 chips for an hour <laughs> and a half and he didn't play a hand. <laughs> Like True. he got a donation. What was that big donation? Uh, it was like an he was dominating the other guy. Ace Jack versus King Jack or something. Uh, was that Mr. what it was? Mr. Gamble called King Jack of twelve bigs. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was a. That's the thing. Like when these guys who got the crazy images, they just get paid so much more extra value. Like Volkman, Mr. Gamble, King Three might actually peel here. Yeah, it's like blind versus blind. Big stacks, they often like just raise some garbage. So you like King High has to be a call now for these 25% mm -hmm. pop bets. Yeah, obviously know that that's not going to be the only bet. 
That's a big bet. <laughs> now King three offsuit can fold real quick. Yeah. Um, Plus, is just hoping Spun has a 10. They can't get away. Bruno, this is not the right moment to be a hero. <laughs> you don't have to win them all. He already had his crazy moment with his Jack Deuce. <laughs> all right, and that is going to do it for our second hour. If you guys are enjoying the show, make sure to subscribe to the GG Poker YouTube channel. We are here every single Tuesday to cover a final table of the 10K that obviously always starts on Sunday. I'm going to take a couple of minutes and then we'll be back with hour three, which very well could be the last hour of week five, season two. All right, Brent, this time let's mark our comeback with the return. How's that sound to you? A $50 buy-in. So that sounds good to you, right? Because that's something even you can afford, yeah? Well, let's not get carried okay, away. Okay, I probably okay. need half from maybe you, but uh, yeah, let's return, Jeff. We'll just add that one to the tab. Day one's in the lobby now. Day two is this Sunday. And Brent, hit me with the guarantee for this one. How about a million dollars guaranteed, a $50 buy-in, and you can win a bracelet? A cool million sounds good to me. Hello, everybody. Daniel Grano here with some good news from the GG Poker Network. We've been preparing a promotion for the new year called GG Care. As any poker player might know, sometimes you find yourself in what we call unfortunate situations, you know, some ugly bad beats, right? Well, that's where GG Care comes in. GG Care will take care of you with huge prize pools available every day. Let's see how you can get your GG Care benefits. Aces versus Kings. Yep, all in before the flop. I mean, nobody's going to fold that, right? That's just a setup. It's a cooler. I can't imagine being, you know, at the final table of the World Series of Poker heads up and this happening to me. It's just brutal. Bad beats should never be a thing, but eh, they are. Thanks, GG. Flop the top set. Very nice. Some fucking idiot chases a runner runner straight to suck out on me. Unbelievable. But in my darkest moment, GG Care was there. Thanks, GG. Flop the second nut set. The middle set on the flop. It's an impossible cooler. How can you be beat there? The guy has top set. Nobody's folding that. Sometimes it just feels unfair. Thanks, GG. As you can see, in the most unfortunate of situations, GG Care will appear for you. Are you curious how to get these benefits? Don't worry, you don't even have to lift a finger. First, simply enjoy the game as usual. Whenever something unfortunate happens, GG Care will be there. Secondly, when confronted with such circumstances, GG Care automatically will register you into a flip out tournament with a huge prize. Just check the pop out window. Thirdly, take a rest, have yourself a nap, get yourself a good night's sleep, clear your mind of all the bad beats, and when you wake up, the daily GG Care prizes will be waiting for you. That's all there is to GG Care. Pretty simple, isn't it? Just play the game as normal and GG Care will take care of you. And the prize money will only grow more and more in the future, so keep your eyes posted and good luck, everybody. I hope you don't have too many bad beats, but if you do, GG Care will be there. Thanks, GG. Elkie was waiting to come back to the final table. Fedor holds things. Oh my. Michael Otamo is the best.
Welcome back to hour three of the High Roller Super Millions, where Hernan and Oko will come back soon. Now we can finally see his beautiful chair. I wonder if that's a Herman Miller or not. Then are living the good life. We're down to three. Obviously, Klaus has all the chips at this point. But we know that Bruno and Miao are not going to make it easy on him. I think all three can be very happy and satisfied with their performance so far. Bruno will continue attacking the big blind of Mio, and I feel like this is actually a kind of interesting little dynamic that's been evolving throughout the night. Nana is back with his coffee by the looks of it. King Jack will just make the call, and 7-3 actually outflops King Jack. King Jack is not a lucky hand tonight. I think that's safe to say. We do have the King of Spades. Doesn't really do much. A five of hearts doesn't change anything at the turn. Bruno is still in the lead here with his 7-3. He just keeps on attacking that big blind of Meow. <laughs> He's always got like unplayable hands too, right? Makes them playable. Not the most exciting hand, but Bruno should be able to take this one down. He is going to fire one big blind on the river. And with King High, you may be tempted to just toss in that one big blind. Just to see what your opponent is high. playing from the small blind. <laughs> the nut high, right? No one ever says nut high. It's always saying nut low. This is the nut high. I think I'm... Yeah. Man, it feels like you're supposed to call against this guy, but it does feel like I'm getting value bet, doesn't it? Wow. wow. A race. A race on the river. You know, that pretending that he hit that queen, and he actually takes it down. Well done, mate. Well done. I'm telling you, man, Me Meow, he's, he's got it right like every single time besides that one hand, which I don't blame him. It's a pot-sized no. bed and the blind versus blind, but wow, he's, he's got moves. Yeah. Nana, of course, referring to the Jack Deuce versus 8-7 hand, but yeah, that was an almost impossible call for 8-7. Kings versus Ace Deuce in the small blind and big blind. Klaus just keeps up picking premium hands. <laughs> Not just the premium, like the top the absolute tier. best. Yeah, keeps getting action too, right? Like, look at this. Yeah, that's indeed perhaps the biggest difference, right? Because Chris actually got quite a few aces and kings in the beginning, but he didn't get anything out of them. Maybe one time someone opened, and then he was able to take it down, so he wins the blinds and one open. But other than that, he really didn't get anything of it. Meanwhile, Klosk just keeps winning pretty big pots with his big ones. Oops. Is that the free roll timer or something funny? No, no, no. Whenever I walk downstairs, I put a little timer for myself. But I put it apparently twice. It didn't cancel it, so it just reset. Just to make sure that, unlike you, I won't be late, Nano. Because I know I can trust on you to be here when the break ends. So someone has to be here to welcome my viewers back. And I'll be that guy. An opening of 8-7 suited, and Bruno shows us that he's not afraid as he just rips Ace Jack in for almost, uh, well, not 30, but 25 bigs. Oh, it's actually more than that. Sorry, guys, I can't count. It's over 30. <laughs> this is a funny blind level, Roddy. I'm, I'm with you. Yeah, I, I, don't understand. I don't know what they got. <laughs> no, this was my bet. I can't do math anymore. You know, I, I really prefer it when our show starts an hour earlier. When like winter time kicks in in Europe, it doesn't start at 7.20 for me, but it, or, well, let's say uh, 6.50 p.m., but it actually starts at 5.50, and I really like that. I mean, I don't, I don't know if we can move the, the tournament time for you, but we, we can... No, 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 but that's going to happen again. Like in, uh, I don't know how many uh, weeks, when we enter winter time, then the show starts the, an hour earlier. You got the summertime thing. Yep. We are currently in summertime, and that's when it starts a bit later for me. I'm getting, I start getting a little tired at 11 p.m. I'm not a young man anymore, then. I'm also getting there. I'm not as old as you, but I'm starting to get there. How much younger are you than me? I have no idea. I think two or three years now. Aren't okay. you like 37? 36. Uh, I don't know. Let me think. <laughs> I know you're bad with numbers, but you don't even know how old you 36. are. 36. I'm 36. Okay, so I'm two years younger than you. A6 versus A9, and they both flop a pair. Middle pair versus bottom pair. Obviously, Meow's hand looks better anyway, because he's also holding the Ace of Clubs. 
<laughs> exactly. But they both have a very showdownable hand where they want to get one bet in max. Quarter pot. Definitely check calling this. Never seen anyone fold a pair for quarter pot. An ace be real bad Niels for Bruno, but King is a hand. Card for both players. Yeah. Um, I would expect some check downs, especially in this run out. I feel like in an ideal world, whether it's Bruno or Miao, they combine their stacks so they can get a proper fair heads up battle. I think Bruno's thinking about turning his hand to a bluff. Okay, now he just checked. But yeah, you you want to. But look, we're going to get a proper. I guess you, what you're saying is you don't want to see the chip leader knock out someone and then we've got like some five to one chip lead. Mm -hmm. That is exactly what I'm saying. Miao wins another one. 3.7 million. That's definitely more than he's had throughout the entire evening. It's been a never-ending upswing. It's just been a very slow never-ending upswing for him. Yeah. I, you can't really complain. He's the one, no. literally every pot, but that one pot where he got bluffed, which you can't fault him for. I feel like we're definitely going to play a nice little pot here with 7-6 suited on the big blind. No way in hell we're folding this. They both flop a pair. Tables have been turned. This time it's Bruno with mid-pair. And close with bottom pair. Yeah, quite marginal board for both players. Uh, with a quarter pot bet. Two oh. pair. <laughs> bottom two. Yep. Disguised, I think. Mm -hmm. Six doesn't really change anything besides seven six, right? You don't expect a ten six or a jack six. I guess. Does he fire? He's all right. He thinks he's going for a bet check river. Try to get paid off by worse tens, seven X's. Can you raise? I don't know. Like you feel like you got the best hand, but then you're like, I don't want to put in two million chips with bottom two. He is gonna put in all the chips. Wow, that's he, a huge thing. He's gonna raise. put in six million chips, mate. How do you like them apples? Wow. I think it was just, uh, look, I don't want to raise, get called, and then like funny cards roll off. Like say the eight, yeah. the nine, the ace of clubs or something. He's like, I got the best hand now. I know it. I'm just go put it in. Let the cards do the rest. I like it. Bruno, really thinking about it, but I don't see how you can call her. It seems like an impossible yeah. call to make. And Bruno agrees. Yeah, he was like suspicious, but he, because he thinks this looks like a draw. But like, sometimes you're like, yeah, but what if he does have two pair? I'm just drawing dead almost. I feel like now it becomes more annoying for Miao because he knows that if he opens and Bruno has anything decent, then Bruno is going to start jamming a whole lot more. And he obviously doesn't want to be wrong on that side because that's a massive pay jump, man. If you pay a 1K satellite, it's a $40,000 pay jump between top three and top two. So Still going to open his head. Queen 10, though. And flops the like winning pair. a solid tournament every pay jump at this point for Miao. But, uh, it's, yeah. it's probably a bit more than that. <laughs> I said a solid throw. I didn't say like a small one. I didn't say the, the 215 uh, beat the idiots or anything. <laughs> Mate. <laughs> the beat the pros is the, most, the best two noodles a week, okay? Why are you hating? Let's see here. Uh, huh. oh, Volkman was doing great not too long ago. 1.5. Well, he was, but then he lost the hand with ace 10 against 7-6. He will start jamming a lot from the small blind. Ace five obviously good enough to pick up the big blind and the antis. It's gonna be hard for him to turn around, but I mean, twenty big blinds still something to work with. I'm gonna see a little defend from the jack eight. Should be a decent hand for Volkman. Queen nine versus jack eight. They're hard to lose, but it is possible. I mean, you're saying it like it's he's dominating him. No, they just got similar connectiveness, but no, it's not an easy win. His top card is higher, his kicker is higher. It's an easy win, mate. I have never seen anyone lose with Queen Anne against Jack 8. It's not possible. I yeah. learned that from you. you wow. Claus actually yeah. raising here. Oh my goodness, it has you happened. Just said, what, did you, what did you just say? Yeah, I, I pulled it. I pulled it and then no. Now you know how it seems. Now you know how it feels to <laughs> listen like, to well, this nonsense. 
It's been what one point one years or something. Have you listened to that? You must love it. No, I wonder what Bruno does with Ace Nine on the big blind. He is gonna get it all in. It's kind of tricky, right? It's one point one. Obviously, if you're wrong here, then Bruno's got more chips than you, and you don't really want to give him that luxury. So, I'm gonna fold, but oh, oh. all in and call. What? One Ace what is... dead. How can Volkman win this pot? Because you, you, your strategy, <laughs> he can't win because the ace is dead, right? That is not my strategy. There's a big difference between seven people getting two whole cards and none of them being one of the outs than one person having one ace, okay? Well, he's definitely not the favorite. He wasn't to begin no. with anyways, but still. He's not. I agree with that, Nananoka, but I've got a pretty good feeling. I feel like we're going to see the king of spades if we roll off. King is, that's very specific read. Meow. You gotta ditch this A7 suited, man. Yeah, yeah. There we go. And he will. Oh, well, Nine's gonna get it all in. Bruno is gonna obviously call. And let's see if he can find that King of Spades or not. Let's Spades do it. Is the card. Only the King the... of Spades. Nah. The Ten of Spades. A oh. king of hearts. <laughs> that's good enough. Paul's needs a nine and a nine only. That's not a nine, not enough pips. So Bruno gets the double up and he's back to his 3.2 million. I honestly think for the excitement of this final table where we don't know who's going to win it, this is good news. For the show, technically, Volkman is the one you want to see battling out. He's fun to watch. Wow. Nice hold. Man, this, this guy, Bruno Volkman, I got to look at his profile man i'm just thinking like this guy's scores have been sick hasn't it and he made so many final tables too like we didn't even really look at that number but bruno's made a lot of final tables in season one i actually have it open i can take a look wow he has a first a first and a second and yeah eight. he had a lot of yeah, eight. eight eight final tables in season one it's his very first of season two i believe you gotta remember this too roddy eight final tables Two wins in the second place. We don't know what the other five scores are. They could be a third, and maybe not a second, a fourth. Like, he's not really the ninth place guy. He's got 1.5 wins. Okay. Look at this bat. A big bat. And 6 7 makes the call. 6 7 of clubs, Nananoko. What is happening here? That was a pretty big bat by Miao. It got paid off. I think Meow can bet again. Honestly, I'm not. Yeah. You see the four, you should be scared, right? But no, his opponent flatted from the small blind. The four is just so unlikely. Um, mm -hmm. Whereas the big blind, you'd be a little bit worried. You'd have a lot of five, four suits and stuff like that. Yeah, I, I feel pretty confident about the king nine go for wow. wild pot. A little greedy, in my opinion, but you know. Definitely a little greedy, but I'm really surprised it's six, seven call to begin with. Mm. I think Klaus was thinking. He maybe his opponent would just do a one and done. Queen I think he's thinking a five was gonna roll off Nana no cup, but I don't know if that's good logic. <laughs> I did not come. The Volkman. He's got a little straight draw here. I would love to see him throw a bet out there. I think he can uh, get some better hands to fold for sure. He's not the only one with the little straight draw though. Yeah, that's true. Tricky it's for a... King Tenda also, like to call a bet. If Bruno wins his hand, and with this bet, he may very well get the job done. No, King Ten makes the call, but the Queen of Clubs is good on the river, though. So Bruno doesn't just win this hand, he wins an even slightly bigger pot. Look at how even the stacks are now. It really felt that Floss was running away with it, and he almost was if the Nines would have held. Now it feels like we've got a pretty fair three-way battle on our hands. 100%. Volkman looking for a value bet. No, he's going to check. I'm, not, I'm trying to understand the logic to the check. I'm not too I sure. I feel like he's not going to get called by worse, but if his opponent bets, he will call off. Wow. Okay, that's a I mean... big bet, but I actually do think, I think if you hit that queen on the river, you just kind of have to call, even if you don't yeah. like it. It's... You're not it's feeling great about it, but it's like the best card for one of the best yeah. cards for your hand. 
Um, look, you got the nine, so you block some straights. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't love it. Flop. Yeah. But yeah, you're obviously a bit worried about an eight and stuff, but I think you have to call, man. He makes the call. Bruno Vogman wins a 2.4 million pot. And guess who's our new chief leader? That's unbelievable. <laughs> this man was down to 12 big blinds not too long ago. He has now retaken the lead of uh, week five, season two, high roller super millions. Like, Bruno is a can't maniac. Believe it. Can't believe this guy's a chief leader right now. Didn't play a hand for an hour and a half. And he's just playing these ridiculous hands lately. Oh my, I just love watching this guy play. You feeling good yet, Roddy? Come on, a little bit excited. There, there is hope. There is hope. But I have also been very good at picking runner up, so I'm not celebrating anything yet. And it's also not the biggest bet we've ever made, so it's all good. Klaus will win this one, though, with his nine deuce after making bottom pair. I don't know. Yes, maybe we have some action here with ace three and sixes. Do you follow the Olympics at all? No, I don't. I, I just read whatever the you know the Twitter brings up the news for you a little bit. But other than that, I I'm not. Following. I just know men's lost the basketball, the USA team or something like that. <laughs> yeah, they in, did in lose twenty five years or, or something. I read. Oh, they're not. Pretty... They're not out yet, right? I'm not sure. Is it a tournament style? Where you get double yeah, elimination? Is, no, I think they have a group stage, mate. No, they've got plenty of games games left. Oh, well, this should be single elimination. One game. That's what I like. One, bra one big bracket, single limb all the way. Isn't that what the Euros do? <laughs> oh, we have a group stage. Oh, my God. <laughs> I cannot believe that you don't understand the European Championships of football. It's the most embarrassing thing. <laughs> Why do you think the tournament is so long? It's because we have a group stage in the beginning. No, I thought it was because of so many countries. <laughs> yeah, that too. But there are six groups of four. And then uh, top two advances. And some of the groups, the number three advances too. That's a bit annoying and hard to explain. But then they start with the bracket. I assume everyone plays each other once. In the in the, in the, in the group, yes. It's called a round-robin format. Everyone plays. Okay, I know what a round-robin is, okay? <laughs> I don't know anything with you, mate. <laughs> so look at the chip lead expanding. Fuck with sixes. Gets it done. I would say this is a premium blind versus blind for Volkman right now. Because he's been playing <laughs> way worse. Yeah, I mean, 7 3, Jack Doos, 9 3, I believe, once. So yes. Yeah. I think King 5, small blind versus big blind. And that's suited. looking real pretty. Hey, you know whose favorite hand that is? <laughs> I was like, where is the eight <laughs> in the five? I have not seen your birthday yet today. No, neither have I. No pocket four. It's been lame with the card. Yeah, she has some aces against kings, but where is eight five off suit and where is pocket fours? We did have pocket fours once, but yeah. Yeah, but they got snap folded. They folded so quick, I didn't even see we had pocket fours. Okay. Do we get a pocket fours or pocket fives by the end of this show today? Just dealt. Yes. Do you think he gets dealt? Yes. Yes. hundred percent. How about sit a set? That's unlikely, right? <laughs> oh yes. Statistically, unless it's pocket fours, then the odds increase quite a bit. All right. So this guy rivers the six. Man, Wokeman on fire. Over five million chips, and the wheels are starting to come off a little bit of claws. Felt like Maybe. he was smooth sailing to victory, man. He was he was two cards last. away from locking it up. He's in last place, Roddy. Out yeah. of three, but I know. But still, this is the first time. Meow's just chilling, winning the spot here and there. So these two are start, has to fight. Klaus is out of position, getting getting the worst of it right now. Mm -hmm. You know, it also mentally just feels really bad. If you like, he probably uses the display my stack in big blinds, and you always look at 100, 105, 111. And now suddenly you start looking at like these really sad numbers. You're like, 30 something, like 40? What is this? Like, how did I become this short stack? You know? You know, obviously, I guess almost the majority of pros like to play in the, the big blind instead mm -hmm. of the, the actual chip stack. But now that you just mentioned what you mentioned, 
I'm just thinking there's a disadvantage to the big blind thing is what happens if you don't realize the blinds are going or you psychologically you think you got less chips when you actually don't because you but you can click on it like I use the big blinds too like almost everyone these days but every now and then I do click on the stack especially early on in the tournament I find it very relevant to keep track of what starting stack was and to see how many times I have starting stack because if it's a field with like 70 people but you have five times starting stack you know you've got a really good stack, right? You're like, oh, mm -hmm. this is basically a top chip. So then I think it's actually still very relevant to know how many chips you have. I think I still like to play without the... I like to... I'm old school. I like the chip counts, man. I don't know. It's kind of weird because hearing it from me, but I guess I played so much in my career without that option. Yeah, no. So oh, I'm just so I, used to it. I was the same for the longest time. Until I actually once, because my French friend kept telling me, he's like, yeah, what the hell, it's so bad what you're doing, don't be so stupid, you just use it once. I used it once and I actually won the first tournament I played with displaying in big blinds. So I was like, I guess can't go back now, can you? <laughs> can't go back now, but I do click on it. I like to uh, take a look at both, but whenever I play the pots, I pretty much always display in big blinds. Because you also just, your brain starts just looking at everything in big blinds and then looking at like chips, it just becomes a bit more complicated again. Ace Look at this. Suit. Big yeah, play. That's, that's a big three bet. If Bruno makes this call, he's got position. There's a very good chance that he outflops his opponent. Yeah. Tricky, though. It's a lot of chips. Yeah. It's not the best hand. It's not even Queen 9 suit, dude. No. Yeah, queen 9, Queen 10 suited. Queen 10 suited, I definitely think queen he's Queen 10's in. Queen yeah. 10's 100% in. Queen 8, though, is like. You say they're not connected. I say they're kind of connected. <laughs> I know. I knew I was, I was about to bring it up. I was like, no, no, they are connected, though. <laughs> I was about to bring it up. You read my mind. 7 5 versus Deuce 8. Two absolute monsters going at it. Who's ahead? 8 high? <laughs> I think Klaus will win this pot, right? Got a fire. He's got seven high. No, no stab. We're waiting for who fires first. Yeah, I can't imagine them both check it down. Can you? Well, with that card, if it goes check check, eight high wins. Someone's got to go for it. There we go. I'd have been shocked. Two aggressive players just checking it down. Yeah, right. Really funny river card because there's so many cards where I feel like the eight wouldn't have played, but. We definitely did. Plus, not afraid. Queen four of diamonds. Nine seven is not a bad hand to defend your big blind with, if you ask me. I'd like to see Meow call and just play a flop. What? I don't know if I like that, Nano. If we're three handed and you're closing the action, I know that nine seven is not a beast or anything. I mean, sure, if the following hand you got kings, you can be like, pretty good fault, but I'd like to see him play a flop with nine seven. He, yeah, I agree with you, but I think the logic was, I don't want to lose an extra big blind so I can get this full double up of pocket kings, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know if he's going to get the full double against the 8-6 offsuit of Bruno, but he's definitely going to win this one. I mean, Unless he, he three bets, a... like, real small. But nah. Nah, like, he'd have to, like, min race to get 8-6 to continue mm -hmm. the day after your birthday. <laughs> No, it's not. It's not. It's no, not actually, is it? It's a month. <laughs> 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 oh, you're a disaster. Absolute disaster. That's when are you gonna make it to day. Europe? We gotta. We gotta say, play some poker in uh, Rotterdam. Roddy, it's bad that I said that, right? Because that means I don't know what day your birthday is. Well, I know. I know you're not I, gonna know when my birthday is. I also know when my birthday does finally come around again. You're still not gonna wish me a happy birthday. <laughs> As Bruno flops trip sixes. That's like a year from now. That's a long time, but okay. Yeah. Eight six. A little bit. Jack 10, my floaty. I can see a floaty. Might, might have the best hand. No, Meow is not that kind of player. Yeah, I, I did have the feeling. If that queen was a, a nine, then I do definitely think that he continues. Aces oh, and eights. Oh my okay. gosh. I yeah, but Meow, not the cool. kind of... Nah, but he's not the guy to just rip 35 big blinds with pocket eights, though. Well, it's 31. Yeah. Obviously, if Volkman just open-folded, they would have got it in. 
as mm. played. Now, yeah. I mean, look, rip it in is plus EV for sure. Yeah. But you're just saying it's not characteristic of his style, which I think nope. I agree with you. I can. He just lost a pot. Maybe he's just like, you know what? I don't want to three bet this. Played his post flop. Just force it in pre. Oh my god, he's he does. In. Oh my goodness. Guy, well, aces again. Full value. My god. So that's actually ridiculous. <laughs> Klaus is just like, maybe if I take some time, Bruno comes along too. No, mate. Bruno's got queen six of spades. Okay. Just get it all in. Oh, that's so sad. I feel like this is the first time all night long that Meow has done a move like this. Folding is obviously no longer an option. Eights have made a couple sets tonight. Can they make another one? So far, the answer is no. We need an eight and an eight only. Or it is time for a heads up between the man who came in as Chip Leader and Bruno Volkman. That's not an eight. Unreal. And we even said not too long ago that he doesn't just get aces and kings quite often. He gets paid on them. And well, this is Christmas and Easter on the same day, man. Someone opens and the other guy just rips it all in. And, you got, and you're there like, hey, I'm last to act and I've got aces. It's like, well, poker is hard, isn't it? Yeah, literally cannot misplay it. Um, we are down to heads up. Uh, but Meow, I actually think he played pretty good. Especially yeah. for guys, it's a the second week in a row. Satellite winner got third place, um, but this one I think played exceptionally better than the last one. Uh, but he he played good. This, eights is not even a bis play, to be honest. No, it's not. It's absolutely not. It's just really unlucky. That's what it yeah. is. It's really really unlucky, and especially because I feel like he's. I don't want to say like necessarily conservative because he has been making moves like with the king ten in that uh, small blind big blind battle that was cool and stuff, but. It's just, not the okay, it's not the way. Occasionally, he just overfolds his big blank. That's all. But yeah, not all the time. Just sometimes. Mm -hmm. Seems like Bruno made a move there with six five against six seven. Was able to take it down. Now we've got king eight versus king four. Last week we had this funny dynamic where at first it felt that Isaac was outpipping uh, Zagos all the time, and then suddenly Zagos was outpipping uh, Isaac Haxton all the time. He starts chopping up, uh, but. They yeah, pretty much have the e the same stack here, Roddy. So it's an uh, even match going into this heads up. You got money invested in Volkman. 12.3. That's a hard one to get in heads up with these stacks as of this this type of player, too. Um, I don't know Klaus's heads up game. But I know Volkman's pretty good at heads up. So it should be a lot of fun. I'm excited. Could be a long yep. one. Could be a short one. All right, Tasteless. All right. You don't know what that means, but it's okay. No. <laughs> it sounded some... like an insult when you say it tasteless. <laughs> like, that was kind of rude. Well, I'll let you get away with it. No. Oh, wow. Oh. Trip sevens for Bruno Vogman. Tasteless is one of the most famous stock of two commentators in the world. And we kind of make fun of some of the things he says in the games because he is a, like, a, he's the, he's the top tier. He's a part of the top tier commentator team together with Artelsis. Those are their nicknames. But Tasteless says a lot of funny things. And one of the things that he has said a lot is like, this could be a long game. It could be a short game. And then we're like, yeah, it could be in the middle too. Like, what is this commentary? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's you with heads up there, mate. Like, could be a long heads up, could be a short heads up. Thanks, Nanonoko. In all the news, the sky is still blue and the sun will rise. <laughs> all right. So three bet by Volkman. Bets the flop quarter pot. Gets called by King Queen. I think that's a mandatory call on the flop. Turn, he now has a queen of diamond draw. If he could, if the king queen is good sometimes, that's just pure best hand, then he's got a call here. He thinks that's that's the case. So he does wow. call. What a monster pot, man. That's one of the probably the second biggest pot we've had all night long. Second hand of heads up, too. Is this the not high again, by the way, mate? <laughs> it isn't that high. Volkman, though, as played, will probably just go for all the chips. Just try to get called by ace. Ace Jack, Ace 10, Ace Queen. Um, I don't really see how he can play it any other way. I mean, he might bet smaller if he thinks the Ace could get away and try to make sure it calls, but probably will just send it. Bruno Volkman about to take a pretty big lead in this heads up. He goes for all of it. <laughs> They're not high. I don't. Guy three bet your pre flop. He bet the flop. He bet the turn. He shoved the river. Like, 
sometimes you just gotta believe at some point, right? Like you're not gonna call off second hand heads up with King Queen High, are you? This, that, this, that is, the, this would be an insane call. <laughs> like imagine if he's right, he'd be a hero. Like we'd all clip it, we'd all share it on Twitter. He'd be an absolute legend. Like at this point, he's thinking about it. Is this my moment to become a legend or not? <laughs> Volkman right now actually thinks he's got his opponent as an ace. And when I assume Klaus will fold, he's going to be like, oh man, I should have been yeah. less. He got away with it. <laughs> well, Klaus ain't folding yet. They're not high. He's looking awfully attractive. No. He does let it go. He decides that tomorrow is a brand new day to become the ultimate hero. That would have been some, that would have been one way to end tonight. But look at the lead that Bruno Vogman has just created for himself. In he two now hands. has yep, 83 big blinds against the 34 of Plus. Oh, my favorite level too. This is perfect. Uh, but yeah, Roddy. I said earlier it was even chip stack. You're feeling pretty happy about this one. Now you're feeling really good. I can't believe this guy Volkman is just Two wins, two, two, 1. 1.5 wins, season one, a full win in season two, potentially. Like, stars he beat, a very he beat the very first player to win a high roll of Super Millions in season one and season two. Yeah. As a writer, he's looking real good, too, ever since that one little double up when he had four, ever since Mr. Gamble doubled him up, Ace Jack, King Jack. He's just been involved. I think Tony G. I wanted to look at something. Roddy, here's my question. Yes. When does Volkman ask if he can make a deal? <laughs> he didn't. He said, good, good, good luck, man. I was actually, uh, I was holding my heart when they started chatting and they wished each other good luck. I found I'm like, don't do it again, guys. <laughs> Let's not do that today. But, uh, you know, Bruno Volkman is also here on his first bullet. Of course, the same goes for Klaus. But I feel like these victories, they're always perfect when it's your first bullet. It's nice, of course, to win a 10K, but if you then have that five in between brackets in front of your name, I think it feels a little bit less special than when it's your first bullet. I mean, I, I don't think they think about that that much, but I can definitely see where you're coming from. Uh, when you win it, you're happy, even if you put in seven bullets. I guess no oh, one has technically I'm, won it. I'm hey, not saying that you're not happy, already. but it's more pure. This is a pure victory. The guy, so of all the people who's won our series, our Super yeah. Millions, the most bullets we've seen is five, correct? That has one. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't think we've seen a six win it. Or... No. I don't even know if we... Have we seen a six final table? I don't even know if we have. Yes, I think we did. I definitely think... I feel like someone even made it with seven bullets to our final table once. Yeah, I feel like we might have seen... A, I don't know, Daniel DeVore seems like that guy to me. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what a flop here for Bruno Volkman. Flops mid-pair and the 10 high flush. Wrong. Turn card. That's an action turn, well, mm -hmm. semi-action, but enough to give Volkman the, the action he wants. 300,000 chips, a little less than three big blinds. Klaus, with his up and down, will make the call, and he completely whiffs. It's kind of funny now, because if you get called there, if you're Bruno, you're like, oof, that's not quite the river card I was hoping for. Yeah. Um, I can see it two ways. I can see him check to try to induce from a four or maybe bet and try to get ace deuce ace three to call he's going to go for the check option not 100 percent sure he's going to call but if Klaus bets like 1.2 million here can't you call with 10 five that's a that's a big big bet yep that's mm. a very tough call for bruno vogman i think he might be able to find a call i want to check check on the flop what is he, i guess he'd be worried about two pairs like a seven five he said, wow, he well, folds. Big, big fold. Yep. Well done there by Klaus. That keeps his hopes and dreams alive. We have Jack 3 mm. versus Deuces. Yeah, weird. I think Volkman could have thought about it a little bit more. I don't know. Wow. Ooh, that's a big jam. 40, 40, 40 bigs with Deuces in a heads up. This is, uh, right. I'm taking down this pot. If you want to flip with Ace King, let's just spin it up. Yeah, but I mean, that's the good scenario. The bad scenario is, all right, let's do it. I'll call you with sevens if you want to flip with ace king. Oh, wait, you've got this. Is? Sevens look real good now. Two to one chip lead. Then eight starting to check. 
much do you think we'll make it to another break? Uh, how long do we have? 20 I'm minutes. Too... 20 minutes on yeah. the oh, dot. For... Yeah, for sure. For sure? He's jamming 40 bigs with deuces, and you say for sure? Yeah, but how often is he going to get dealt pocket deuces? That's the thing. <laughs> like, and well. then, not only does he have to jam, get dealt those hands, his opponent needs to pick up a hand to call, which is actually not that often. By the way, I don't know if you did, but I got a care package today of GG, mate. No, what would you get? I got a hoodie, I got a t-shirt. Wow, did he just call with Queen High? Yeah, he did. Or did he bet? No, he called. He called off. Nice value bet. Yeah. Cool. Damn. I, 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 I guess, it. yeah, your bet's looking good. But what I would you a, get? I have a GG Poke t shirt. I got like 15 face masks, WSOP and GG Poker branding. So that's kind of nice. Can pimp up the entire family with GG face masks. And I've Solid. got a really cool gray hoodie for uh, the winter months. It's a bit too warm, probably, to wear the, the, the zipper hoodies at this point, but it looks real cool too. Does GG be... have a uh, store or anything? Do you know? Jesus, Nano, Noko, we hyped up that store not too long ago. Oh, did Do you we? even pay attention to anything I say? <laughs> we showed it off. We talked about it on stream. We showed people where they have to go to. When did we do that? Maybe I was during a break or the ads or something. No, you, you were there. We spoke about it. We said that, all right, at this point, they don't have all their products yet, but we will keep okay. expanding the store. More products will be added. They could pick up a couple of T-shirts, hoodies, caps. Jeez Louise. See, you don't, see, you don't realize. I just was saying that so you could expand on it to explain to everyone, but maybe I actually knew the whole time. <laughs> ggstore.com nanonoko if you ever want to check it out you can pick Maybe up I'll a couple of hoodies right now. yeah actually, actually don't... one of the hoodies that i got is uh, available at the gg store that is this one with the big uh with the big gg on the back you can pick that up oh my god you are by the so way bad. volkman somehow stole this pot mm -hmm. hit the queen look at that board the six deuce is looking good so not a big one heading to Bruno's way. Even though it's only eight big blinds, but we're looking at 9.1 against uh, 3 million. Jack 10 of hearts. That's my favorite hand. Against sevens. You know, I would call here, Nana no, okay. no way in hell I'm folding Jack 10 of hearts, baby. But obviously, Klaus is not going to make the call. No, well done by Bruno. Oh, he had Jack 10 of hearts. I thought it was a... Yeah. I would have just ran it. Ship it. Looks like my opponent has a pocket pair. In green offsuit versus 10 6 of clubs. 10 6 makes the call and is drawing very, very thin on this board. Yeah, nice flop here. 10 6 of clubs, though. It's got them back doors. As long as your opponent's three bay some garbage, maybe you can float. He does float. Well, he is winning this hand. A little bit of big blinds. I'm looking at the store, though. Yeah. You know what they need? They need some emoji shirts or something, don't you think? They like need a, a Nananoko and Roddy shirt. Oh, but seriously, like, it's like a you suck emoji, Oki. That would be just perfect. <laughs> yeah. And it says you suck. Yeah. No, that's actually a very good idea. I don't know if they've thought about it. Yeah, but the emotes are sick. So, yeah, you may as well print a couple t-shirts with them. Or I think hoodies is a bit harder, but I think you can have like a GG hoodie and then like a little uh, good luck Elky face or something or a good game. Yeah, it's a good idea. I would like the original uh, emojis. That would mm. be nice. The yellow, yep, yellow they, ones. They're awesome. Well, that's a good idea. I mean, I know that they are still going to expand the store. This was just the start. But that's the store hasn't been online yet for too long. Then, then, uh, but you know what? At least we spoke about the store. So you'll get kudos points for that. But does GG have a store? <laughs> All righty. Let's see. So Six is good. Yeah, man, this guy's winning some key pots, for sure. Blinds are up, blinds. though. It's going to be real hard to calculate the big blinds now, guys. We don't yeah. have our 100k nope. big blind level anymore, but... Uh, uh. Production, can you switch it to C stacks and big blinds? 6-4 offsuit. It's garbage. Maybe he's born on the 6th of April. Yeah, maybe. Probably not. He's going to lose chips here, though. Unless he can Probably. muscle his way through. He could muscle his way through. He's Volkman, right? 
Uh, well, he does pick up a four on the turn, but I don't really see Klaus folding his eight here, unless Bruno bets real big. Like, this I has to be at least 800k plus if he wants to get his opponent to fold, but even that is unlikely. I think Volkman thinks he wants to show this down, though. He beats some uh, queen highs, jack highs. Ooh. He's going to check again. That's actually a scary uh, river, isn't it? It's concerning. Four straight. But I think both players are trying to show their hand down. Like Klaus is probably thinking, how can I get called by worse? Got eight, no kicker. Don't check. I like how Bruno Vogman has an official tennis page. <laughs> Let's see how much money he's won in tennis. All I've right. got a shocking announcement. He's done better in poker. <laughs> this, I remember previously in our profile, we put aspiring tennis player. Didn't know he actually played like for prize money at some point in his life. He once upon a time duked it out with a dude called Michael Lammer, who was ranked 502 on the world ranking. Did he play against um, Djokovic? <laughs> no, probably not, Nana no, 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 <laughs> I'm just going to go out on a limb and say probably not. <laughs> He's 3 main Jack 4 suited into Jacks, Roddy. So you're telling me Klaus is getting chips on his premium hand? <laughs> yeah, standard. Like, that's especially not bad for two Jacks. Not exactly all the chips, but it's good enough. Oh, we've got a match again. I mean, a little while ago, you looked at 9 million. Now it's 7 million against 4.8. This is still anybody's game. 13 minutes to go till our next break. And Bruno's cooling down a little bit. Yeah, but Volkman's good at chipping back up to 8 to 9. It's happened many times so far. Loss has been down to 3.5 million like three or four times now. Let's show you my Chi Poker hat. You got a hat? Are you a hat kind of guy, Roddy? No, I'm more of a beanie guy, actually. I like beanies. Oh. I, I actually have the other cap, too, of GG. This is the one they sell in the store. Yeah, not GG bad. GG poker. <laughs> Very sort of. <laughs> I, like it. I just want to... How about a hat with a huge emoji on it? <laughs> oh, my last hand. That would be a good. That would be very popular at WSOP. Live, yeah, then like you can put it on. Hand. Yeah, you can put it yeah. there. Nines against Queen 10. This could be a funny one. Definitely three bangies, two nines. I think Queen 10 probably see a flop. I know the these guys. Yeah, for sure. Ooh, that's I know a big it's a one, big, though. It's a big three bet. But I think they know that both players' three bets are pure garbage that you got to call up these Queen 10s now. Flop is ace ace four with two clubs. Not exactly what Bruno Vogman was looking for. Klaus will make a tiny C bet. Bruno lets it go, which means that Klaus is actually a nil chip leader. Damn, what a turnaround, man. Not too long ago, this man was playing less than 30 big blinds, and now he gets pocket nines again. Must Sorry, be nice. man. He, he always gets value of his. I know it's not the premium pocket pair, but nines are still really strong, and he got he got a good value. He's gonna get more value here. Opponent hit a mm -hmm. pair of fives. Or goes, check. Goes check, check. Interesting check, but still, I think he'll get some value. Yeah, but now Bruno might bet, thinking that he's got the best hand because he's got a pair. You think he for sure has the best hand? Yeah. <laughs> Boss trying to look at like he's got the little ace high here, trying to pretend. Or is he thinking about raising? He's going to wow. raise. What a slick way. What a slick way to play these pocket nines. Yeah. Well, well done, Klaus. And what a uh, what a heads up this has been. <laughs> now he, what is this? Three hands Three in times. a row, pocket nines. <laughs> All right, one yeah. more. Just, just it, one more. I don't think no, it could ever happen. Literally impossible. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say. I think that is literally impossible. Four hands in a row and heads up. Pocket nines. <laughs> dealer, dealer change, please. <laughs> Three hands is already literally Insane. impossible. And it happened. Yeah. Alrighty. Both. Nothing. Big bet. And take yeah. it down. Nice with because uh, there's obviously like no good river card really for Klaus there, so he may as well bet big and try to take it down, and he did. This is one hell of a battle. 
They play fast and they play big pots, don't they? Yeah. Queen seven off some garbage. The powerhouse of Ben CB into the muck there. It's not powerhouse unless it's suited, Roddy. Okay, Fine. come on. Fine. You sound a little under the weather. You under the weather today, Roddy? No, I'm not like sick, but yeah, I've been sneezing. I think it's a season change. You know, uh -huh. like the pollen in the air and stuff. It's been like raining and then it's just sunny and yeah, sometimes I, I get a little sniffy. It's so it's kind of like a new blind level. <laughs> I guess if that's if that's what you want to go with, mate. But I'm feeling fine. I'm just sneezing. Bruno finally wins one again, and that was about time. Yeah, he won the big blind. Well done. Eight <laughs> five. Yeah, we on the same page, Roddy. You know it. It's one of the very first times we see it tonight, to be honest. Literally? Or a second time? I can't remember now. I feel like somebody must have had 8-5 once while we were full ring, but it's not been a whole lot of 8-5, that's for sure. Bruno wins another one. A ten versus 10-6. Uh, this is one where Bruno can 3-bet and just take it down 3. Yeah, it's uh, playing 40 effective. Definitely pretty okay. premium-ish. I've always wondered, why do poker players say it's 40 effective? Like, why would it be 40 not effective? Oh, you, you don't actually know. No, so tell legitimate me. Legitimate reason. It basically is, you look at the, if you see this, you might see Colossus stack size and you think he's playing 60 big blinds, but it's the stack of the smaller guy. So you say effective. Does that make sense? No. Try so, me again. So if we look here, we're playing, how to, instead of big one, I'll say we're playing 5.3 million effective because that's the most someone could lose in a pot. That's all. So you just say it in big blinds ways. Because like some, you ever see ESPN, they're like, guy puts in 10 million chips, but that guy has 1 million chips. They're like, we're playing. Yeah, like okay, 10, okay. Yeah. Yeah. But then it, that's just really obvious, no? But, okay, fine. But that's basically the reason. So anyways, ace four offsuit. Not much of a hand, but he's taking his time. Is he going to blow up here? He's got 40 big blinds. Bruno Some makes a move it. here. He's going to get snapped, that's for sure. He makes actually a pretty good fold because ace four and heads up on the button. You don't like to fold those. Well done. Yeah. He, he saw he was like, I four bet this. Is it excessive? He was like, it is. King four clubs. Why can't you just say that we're playing 5 million chips? Why do you have to add the word effective? Well, usually we talk in big blinds, but uh, they were playing 40 big blinds. But if you're to someone who's not as experienced, they wouldn't really understand. Like, or they would just take them more time to think about it. That's all, I guess. Like in your early days of poker, you know, you might be like, you might get confused. Like we're playing a... We played a strategy with a 70 big blinds style, but the guy's got like 20 big blinds. And they, obviously the hands play differently based on on that. Yeah. But do you know, Roddy, it's a small thing. Don't get too I, hung up on it. Don't worry about it. No, Just I, lingo. I, I, it's okay. like, why does that idiot commentator always says it could be a long match or a short match? I don't <laughs> yeah, know. But... It's, just, it's just part of the game. Well, we know that that's nonsense. And I'm starting to think that the effective thing is, oh, yeah. Whatever. I guess we're moving on as Klaus wins another one. Even if it's just a couple big blinds, it really does make a big difference in these heads ups. Bruno Volkman picks up a stand of clubs, though. Let's see if Klaus is feeling creative with his King Three of Diamonds. If he does, he's going to get punished. That's a pretty good flop for King Three, to be fair. Yeah. A good turn, too. It's not <laughs> like you're like, in love with it, but <laughs> it's something. Like, it's a good turn. And you look at the board three spades, four straight. Yeah. Yeah, it's all right. It's, it's not there. good, but he's got a hand. Let's give it at that. Yeah, he's made something. Mm -hmm. Love to see this go check, check. Bruno probably thinks that his nothing is best, but Klaus did make a very random pair of threes on the turn. Blinds go up again. Queen Jack suited is a beautiful one. Honestly, it, one Bruno. of the hardest levels to calculate. 140,000, 70,000. My God. This is... It's only easy because Klaus has got 7.7 .7 million. 
Why is that easy? I mean, Bruno has exactly 30 big blinds. Actually, no, it's not easy. For some reason, I thought 7 million was 100 big blinds. It's 100 small blinds. Now I'm just confused. Let's <laughs> move on. <laughs> I don't know how you manage to make this weird each and every single week, but you do it. All right. Bruno with now less than 30 big blinds in pocket sixes. He's going to raise it up. Punish the limp of class. Has Volkman clawed his way back in since being down? I'm not sure. Don't think so. No, not not really. He's been losing more chips. 9-7 of spades against Queen Jack offsuit. Queen Jack makes the call. We've seen a lot of these kinds of flops tonight. You know, the ace, ace, four, king, king, four, king, king, deuce, queen, queen, deuce, queen, deuce, deuce. And they've been wow. battling too. This hasn't been like, they've always been calling just queen highs, all right? Queen high mm -hmm. makes a pair. Jack, flush draw out there. Flush draw probably going to bet. Move him some pawn off some high cards. Well, that's not going to happen. Not over. Would you ever race here with Queen Jack or is that stupid? Nah, plenty. Because you could lose a lot less chips by just check calling and the opponent has it. Well, unfortunately for Bruno, he does make a pair on the river. He thinks it might be good. Receives the bad news that it's not good. Things are starting to get real dire for Bruno Volkman now. As he has uh, 22 big blinds by the looks of it. I wouldn't even hate it if he gets very crazy here with ace-5. I mean, don't want to lose these blind. spots. Obviously, jamming is fine. Uh, raising is okay, too. It's a tricky hand to play post flop if you do get called. <laughs> Gonna go for the raise. King-4 might actually call here. King highs are... Play. Now he gets sometimes that's the problem for raising is you get mm. these flops sometimes. And yeah, he he probably will win it if he bets, but it's uh, uh I, I, don't know. I guess you got the four spade. Oh. oh that's a bad turn card for Bruno Volkman. That's a real bad turn card. It was already uh looking mm -hmm. a bit dire with just ace high on the flop, but things mm -hmm. are just getting worse. These quarter pot bets, man, sometimes they just induce action. Yeah. Now he's bet again, quarter pot. Nothing. He doesn't have anything, Roddy. He might be out of tournament if some certain cards roll off, like a jack, a queen. He might just go for it. I don't think that one he will, though. No. But I think he also knows that his ace high is no good. It's not like he's got the best ace high. Yeah, but kind of just doesn't make sense to jam here. What would he be hoping for? Move your opponent off a of six? Might have even they might have yeah. pulled the hand on turn. Six or a three. Off check calling and jamming yourself. I mean, I'm not saying check calling is the play, but let's check. Do you think Klaus can jam the king four? Interesting. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. I don't think he's worried at all. Let's rip it in. Volkman. All right. He could call here. Right? No. Like he, he beats 8-7, he beats some spades, he beats some 10 jacks, queen jacks. Uh, to be fair, he does beat hands. But this mm -hmm. is his tournament life. Um, does that matter? It's heads up. This is Roddy's money on the line. It's heads up. Oh. He oh my calls. god, he makes the call. It is out. Wow. Bruno makes the call with ace high. And Klaus, the man who came into this final table as chip leader will be our fifth winner of season two when it comes to the high roller super millions and he walks away with two hundred and sixty seven thousand dollars also a one bullet entry for him so a very pure victory this week in our hrsm it didn't look like it at one point at first it really looked like it and then it started to look like it even more that Paul's was going to win it and then it started to look real bad but he i feel like i blinked twice and he completely turned it around in that heads up match against bruno yeah, um, Bruno, obviously another great score at second place finish. Seemed like he was going to ship the tournament, right? The guy with 400k played amazing. Um, another great score. But uh, he made the big ace high call on the river. It wasn't good. But Klaus, first final table in a Super Millions. Didn't play that many in Season 1. Season 2, he's played a couple. A win. Played phenomenal. Came in as a chip leader. Really had a 
I think he had a smooth final table. And yes, he got paid off with aces against kings of Mr. Gamble, who I feel Mr. Gamble should be at the end here. Um, but he kept on getting paid, but he played well. Uh, in general, I think pretty happy of it. Just got the better of Volkman in the end. What was that hand in the heads up where Volkman had was like 10-5 of clubs, right? And it was a pretty big pot. And then that river was just this random card mm. that yeah. didn't help him. And it also didn't help Claus, but it did make Claus bet. And it got Bruno to fork. I feel like this was a real key hand in the heads up. Because if Bruno would have won that one, Bruno would have been like 9.5 million plus chips, I feel like, at that point. And there's no way almost that he was going to lose it. I think there, yeah, I, the, the board right now was like a 7, 2, 3, 4, 9, something like very similar to that. But basically, Klaus had the, the king 4 for an open and a straight draw. Um, the other guy had a 5, yep. right? Yep. And, and there was one over, two over cards, I think. Mm -hmm. But it was like a gut shot, gut over card. I can't think of it. It's like 8, 6, 5, you know, something like that. I think he could have called to be honest in that hand because what happened on the flop is it went check check the turn Volkman had the the middle pair he bet he got called in the river Volkman checked and Klaus bet is an 80 percent pot and he folded but when you really think about it Klaus was the pre-flop raiser and he didn't bet the flop so top pair very unlikely right the the eight the, whatever the card was that was top pair and then you're telling me this guy called me on the turn, didn't raise, and then all of a sudden he's betting on the the seven, the second pair, this big. Like, to be honest, I think Volkman should have took more time. I think he Volkman was happy with the pace, the way heads up was going. Like he was winning heads up, he was winning these. Uh, he's like, I don't want to just give him a million chips for no reason. I'm happy the way I'm grinding him down now. So he didn't actually take that much time to to lay down the river. But I think he really. Breaks it down. I think he can easily find a call there. Definitely one of the more impactful hands. I think overall was a pretty exciting final table where, especially in the beginning, we had a weird dynamic where it felt like we had three big stacks and then we had a whole bunch of shorties. Bruno eventually wasn't a shorty anymore. Got a bit of a donation with the King Jack and Ace Jack. I mean, sure, sometimes King Jack is flipping or even against Ace Queen, I guess it doesn't do that bad. Ace 10, it does all right. But that really got him going. And I think in the end, Bruno is more than satisfied with his second place since he came into this final table in seventh place. So if you come in seventh and you run it up all the way to second, it's going to sting a little bit. He could have been our first, not two time champ, but a season one and season two champ. In the end, it was Klaus, who did get a lot of premiums. And then more importantly, got paid on all those premiums. Like, Aces, Kings, never just that he opened and everybody folded. No, people always betting into him. Uh, obviously, when we had that three-way set up for Meow, and that's all Bruno's fault. Because Bruno opening, he's like, you know what, this is my moment. I'm jamming the eights. And Klaus is sitting there on his big fight. He's like, oh, got Aces. Well, not the worst thing that could happen with this all this action. It's been a funny one. It's definitely been a fun final table. A little bit sad that Bruno didn't take it. Sad that Mr. Gamble went out with kings against aces, but yeah, that's just the way it is, man. Yeah, I would have loved to see Mr. Gamble get a bit farther, because obviously he was sitting in second place when that hand happened. It was three million chips, was a ton of big blinds. But uh, overall, a great final table. Happy to see it. Again, uh, no one picked the winner. Again, uh, no one, no pocket fives or pocket fours hit a set. And again, Roddy bets didn't work out this season, but that's okay. There's always next week, Rowdy, right? And WSOP starting next week, am I right? Yep, in four or five days. How many days does this month have? Four, 31, uh, right? Like 50, I have no idea. Yeah, 30, <laughs> 31, so in five, in five days. It starts on Sunday, guys. On Sunday, the events will kick off. But there's already a couple of day ones running, like the $50 event that Nanonoko mentioned, where there's a 1 million guarantee. Uh, we also, not yet, but this is like, day 1B or something. I mean, there's plenty of opportunities to make something happen. We'll play some poker this week, Nana. I also have to still commentate a lot of StarCraft. I do think we also have to mention Ramiro, by the way, because poor Ramiro also ran aces into kings. That was uh, pretty painful, too, because he technically could have had a great run tonight. Yeah, he definitely could have. Um, the funny thing is, Mr. Gamble got 
He actually didn't get all the ships, but he got a lot of ships from Ramiro. But in the end, yeah. it was the reverse that got him in the end, right? Like the aces versus kings, not kings versus aces. You know, when we make these little highlight videos at the end of the year, the setup's the coolest. Well, I think these aces and kings will qualify. When you're first and second in ships and have a big lead over the rest of the table, it's just the, the absolute worst. But well done. I think overall, a fun night. Congrats, of course, to Klaus for getting it done. And I look forward to what our lineup is going to be next week. Do, do you think that it's time that we get Nicholas Ostad back? I feel like we're forgetting his name almost. Where is Nicholas? We, we need either Nicholas or Adama within the next two or three episodes or something that's just broken. We even had Limitless already, right? In season two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well, Limitless has been delivering ever since he, got, he showed up to the first final table. He's been showing up over and over again, playing pots, but... I haven't seen Adamo. I haven't seen Nicholas Estet. I don't know where they went. They're still playing. I can tell you that. They get, they're in for three or four bullets every time. They're firing. So, yeah. <laughs> they just uh, not getting here. All right. We hope to see uh, some of these names next week. But of course, it's also really fun to see the satellite winners. Big shout out to Meow. I think he played an awesome final table. Sure, full with a few hands, but maybe you think like, ah, oh, you're closing the action. You could tell. But he showed us that he was not afraid. The King Ten Hand, I love that one. I think that was pretty gangster. And overall, just a fun night. We thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't done that yet. And of course, guys, if you like this cap that I have on my hat or that gray hoodie I showed off, Nelly Wilco doesn't know it, but we have a store, ggstore.com. Take a look at it. More items will be added in the future. We thank you guys for watching, and we'll be back same time, same place next week, 7 p.m. Central European time which is 1 p.m. on the East Coast and 10 a.m. on the West Coast. And it's very early on the Wednesday morning for the Aussies out there. Take care. Good night. We'll see you again. Waiting to come back to the final table. Fedor holds things. Oh my god. Michael Otamo is the best.